intended. That is to benefit all Liberians. Logistics, insurance, whether health, health or risk insurance, equipment, training, etc. Consideration for solar power energy to cut costs and promote efficiency at all of our stations across the country is confirmed. Members of the committee, members of the Library Senate, if confirmed, LBS will live up to the true meaning of its existence, taking into consideration Article 15A to E, especially C, the right to be informed, and D, having access to state-owned media by all. The LBS will become a public broadcasting system for all Liberians, regardless of political affiliation, religious preferences, social status, etc. If confirmed, LBS will entertain, educate, promote cultural and traditional values, growth and development, etc. LBS will innovate and motivate, enlighten our citizens as well. If confirmed, LBS will pay, will play, sorry, a pivotal role in the socio-economic and political advancement of our beloved country, Liberia. With the necessary support and an increase in budgetary appropriations, the LBS can once again become the beacon of hope where our citizens can once again enjoy the benefit of media in all its present day availability. That is print, electronic, social media, and now artificial intelligence. Honorable Chairman, members of the Library Senate, I want to thank you for your service to country and assure you that if confirmed, I will try my best to ensure that LBS is second to none in the area of broadcasting, both television and radio. May God continue to bless the works of our hands and help us to advance LBS beyond the expectation of our people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamini. You're stepping just the scripted, right? Yes, sir. When you come for the community, wow. So we are only by the system to get the other one. So we make additional cabinets. When we get our original form, the only thing we can do is the cabinets and that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So we now go to um, question and answer interaction. Each senator will engage you for 10 minutes, ask you your answer. If you don't feel comfortable answering the question, feel free to say you are not comfortable to ask. Thank you. Thank you. So we will begin with Senator. Nathan Mandel from Makini County. Yeah, so you can start with Senator Sarah. Yeah, so you can begin. Yeah, that's what I think. Senator Momoa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good afternoon, Mr. Nomini. Uh, for me, I would appreciate the government to President Bosley for nominating you to this position. Uh, I know you have been with broadcast even for quite a long time, you have a past experience. So I wish you well in the endeavors and make the LPS great for us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Momo of North Carolina. No. <laughs> Senator Jim Smith of Lewis County. Is 
Presentation. You show the people of Liberia that you will go slightly outside of the established norms in Liberia. That when you are managing your PC or the Minister of Information, you should only be praised single of the government. And your presentation is said that. EWBC will be for all Nigerians. This particular assurance was a conversation you have with President Joseph Walker as a policy statement of this government. Let me interact. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not only was it a conversation I had with him, uh, Honorable Senator, that's the way it should be. And the president shared his vision with me, and I concur with his vision. And I think um, LBS is a state owned media entity, and the Constitution is very specific as to Liberians having full assets to the state run media entity. And I think that's the way it should be. It's just, it should be. The show is different from the reality. Yes, sir, I acknowledge that. That was what it has presented itself to be in the past, not even the last six years, but over the years before. But as a nation, as we grow stronger, we get to understand our rights and get to appreciate, uh, appreciate the Constitution. <coughs> it's only fair that we live by the law. It's a state-run media institution. Therefore, it belongs to all Liberians, regardless of party, religion, status, gender, etc. But how it should be is a good way. Over 10 years from the administration of President Saleh to the administration of President Weir, there has been a draft law then gathering dust on the shelves to transform the EWC legislative in that good way from it to a state broadcaster. Where do you stand on the issue? Will you, will you resurrect that particular draft bill and bring it to the legislature? Honorable Senator, I believe that is the right thing to do. I will work in collaboration with all the others to make it happen. But the truth of the matter is, the law says in Article 15 that no Liberian citizen should be denied access to the state grown media. So the law will only strengthen what the Constitution has already provided. And so LBS, a state-run media entity, will be for all Liberians. And the law that is crafted and the bill that is about to be submitted, I'm told, will be fully su supported by me, simply because it will only go a long way to strengthen the already existing law uh, uh, constitutionally. Eugene Lamin Fagan. Yes, sir. That is well known. Yes, sir. You will be caught up between the rank and the hard place. Managing the state broadcasters, dealing with independent journalism, and being an advocate or activist. Please explain your role in the three areas as you intend to sell the workers' administration information work. Thank you very much. Well, Honorable Senator, I cannot explain my role other than the role assigned to me by the act that created the LBS. And that role is to formulate and implement policies 
of the Liberian Broadcasting System in collaboration with my deputies. That is the rule assigned to me by the act that created the Liberian Broadcasting System. And I will not perform outside of that rule other than the rule assigned to me as a term of reference by the act that created the system. Thank you, but the still was calling from the Rosas County. We will have a uh, move on to Senator Evan Davidson of Bonnie County, followed by Senator Nathan McGill of McGill. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zulini, how are you? How are you? Sir? Are you on drugs? <laughs> no, sir. Have you taken a drugs test? No, sir, but I'm prepared to take one. I'm prepared to take now? Right now, I'll take one. Are you sure you're not on drugs? Right now, I'll take a drug test. I'm not on drugs. Have you, have you taken drugs before? No. The president said drugs will be public enemies number one. The president who has nominated you has taken his drug test to the vice president. Why have you deliberately refused to take your drug test? Honorable Senator, I have not refused to take my drug test. As I said, and I say it even right now, it is a better one ready to take. Why now? Why are you disrespecting the president? Uh, I'm only a, a nominee. Have you done your asset resolution? I'm only a nominee. Uh, I have not done that, sir. <laughs> so the president declared his asset. You refuse to do yours. Our the president took drug test. You refuse to take drug test. I haven't refused to take drugs, drug test. I haven't refused to declare my asset. The law requires, as an official of government, for me to declare my asset. And when I become an official of government, if confirmed by you, sir, I will declare my asset. Do you deserve my vote? Yes, sir. Give me two reasons why I should vote for you. <laughs> the first reason is I'm qualified. The second reason I'm a son of Bobby, and you are my representative. Senator. So, okay. I'm looking at your education qualification. I see you have uh, academic qualification. I see you have two A degree. Then I see you in the library of off, on off. What do you mean of on off? Honorable Senator, I don't only have two A degree. It should have been four actually, but I have three. I have my reading. I brought them with me. It's uh, on my Credential of that is in three. One is in general education, one is in social work, one is in political science. I also brought my bachelor's degree, my own society certificate, and those documents are accompanied by transcript sealed by the various institutions. So if you, if you request them, sir, I'll present them. You want to show me where you have to leave us on your document here? Uh, yeah. The bachelor's is right here. No, no, no. What you give us, I see general education, I see social work. Then, you know, brother, that we are on off. I don't want to be the on off. No. When I attended the university, it came up to during the war. You and I went to school together, honorable senators. So when we were at the university, the war struck us. So on and off, and then we fled. No, I didn't know that brother. No, I am saying I, when I went to see Dominic together, we were together. Yeah, so. Are you confused? No, definitely not. Do you have any regrets why you were discriminated by President Nigeria? Uh, partially, I'll say yes, because I thought I was serving my people and I was doing the right thing <coughs> and I told the truth. So he fired me. Yes, I do have regrets that I did not have the opportunity to serve the library people to the full potential that I have. And so I regret that part. But having been dismissed, I move on. What will you do differently in this new post? In this new post, what I think I will do differently is I will not be defending the government, but as such as my time of reference entails, I will be formulating and implementing policies and programs for the library broadcasting system. So the role will be different. And I will do you believe in your previous post you blindly defended the government and sometimes overdid it, but both blindly and overdid it? Honorable Senator, uh, the opinions expressed more often by Liberians are opinions and they are entitled to it. And sometimes they will say I blindly, sometimes they will say I overdid it. But then what do you say to the people who support them? Or what do you say to seditions that are also Liberians? What would you say to independents? They will say, you did us a heck of a job. 
So again, it's, it's the kind of thing that you know, between the rock and the hard place, you can please everyone, you do the best, and you do it to the best of your ability. Are you a better union patron or the same union patron? <laughs> well, my name says I'm union patron. Um, I've always stood for the truth. I don't think I'm a better union patron. I just think that as you know, you get older, you get mature, you grow, you move from the other ones, you more mature. Uh, everything for me is is beyond growth. No <laughs> problem. Yes, sir. Congratulations on behalf of coach. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. What is good in the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I know you better. I know you too. You know, the, the realm of preaching and the very attitude of my career. Maybe it was a rhetorical question. But in actuality, it's a very serious question. And Senator, she must may also raise the issue. You are a propagandist. And by your own presentation, EFB should be neutral. EFB should belong to all ideas. The issue of the EFB has always been that those who control the ELBC will always take a violent position to the extent that people from other political institutions, political belief, will be denied the right to view their opinion on the ELBC. I want to ask you are you very well committed to the principles as you are? Described in your presentation that here you will belong to all I do, and you will not be in a propaganda war. You say, you know, <coughs> fighting the propaganda government, I want to make sure they go into the lab. And so somebody is free, you will have an idea of you to do your fight and trade us. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Um, like I said, it's like the game of football when you are a defender, you play number five. When, when you are a striker, you must go. And I'm sure the Honorable Senator Joe Tombaugh has so, so much is aware. When I worked in the government, yes, I was I was a history. <laughs> and as Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, I played a role. In this new field, I have a role to play, and that is to formulate programs and policies for the system to work in the interest of the people. I'm fully backed by Article 15. So yes, LBS will be for all Iberians. And if anybody knows anything about being victimized, in 2017, when we served as chairman, we went to the state room broadcasting system to have our program aired. And we were denied. Under my leadership, it confirmed that will not happen. Article 15 will be my reliance and the instruction given to me by His Excellency. President Joseph Numa Bwakai to make LBS a public run radio and television broadcast system that reality will be fully felt by the people of this country. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I want to wish you all a very good year. I know you're good, but I know you're fighting for this country. You work with me day and night. Um, make sure that I enjoy it. Everybody that you want to be me in this day. So, I don't want to wish you a better girl. Go ahead and do what you like. Be watching you. I know you love propaganda, but I'll be watching you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Mania. The past year of the committee, Senator, Senator Silver of the Western Company, is also the chairman of the Senate Committee of Marina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Nominee, uh, let me congratulate you for your conferring. Um, we know all of you and we speak about you in different forms, and I know that uh, no one will say you don't know this job. 
So let's say that we are. So I have a few concerns. What is your thoughts around broadcasting on your national television in sign language for the deaf? Thank you, Honorable Senator. I always have a passion for Nigerians with disabilities. Uh, and I've always felt that they've been treated unfairly. As I walk in here today, uh, some people were privileged to watch that. I saw a visually impaired woman trying to climb the stairs with a king that had no reflectors only, no color coding, it was old. And I knew I had five kings for the blind brought in from the States. I immediately sent my driver back to the car and he brought the king and I shared the king with her. She was very excited. And she told me a story that she was broadcasting on voice and as well as OKFM, okay teaching people to understand the blind, especially in terms of crossing the road, being able to assist them, recognizing the king and what have you. But her inability to access phones denied her and the program was just recently taken off the air. Honorable Senator, if confirmed, the blind, uh, the visually impaired, sorry, are Liberians. People with disability are Liberians. And the law says, no citizen. If confirmed, we will do our best to return her to the airways so that she can educate Liberians on how to care for visually impaired people and how to recognize the king so they are not run over. Uh, sound language. Normally people will say that people are dumb, they're deaf. Those words have been uh, taken back now. All Liberians with disability will be accommodated if I confirm, especially educating the general public on how to handle them. Thank you. That was moving. <clears throat> Quite recently, I had a conversation with the Director General, the last one, Madam Bility, regarding the presence of ELBC in our chambers during our plenary deliberations. Yeah. What's your take on that? Well, again, Article 15 is very clear. The right of the people to be informed. It is not a privilege, it is a right. And the legislature seems to have the responsibility to make laws, provide oversight, and represent the people of this country. And if there are major issues, except otherwise, it should be covered to the benefit of the Nigerian people. Just because a person lives in Zwerju, or a person is in Lofa, or somehow go continue, does not mean that they shouldn't know or hear what's being discussed here because of the distance. If confirmed, we will ensure that their rights to have information as citizens will be respected. Thank you, Chief. Um, <clears throat> So the rights will be respected based on the dissemination of information. I'd like to add that we try to do it in the language they understand. Let's bring ELBC news in Grebo in River G, not series. Let our people hear and understand what we are talking about. So if there's any confusion, they will hear it from us here at this plenary. And you will have the, the, the right information to act on. So that said, I will meet Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Distinguished Chair. Mr. Dominic, good afternoon. Mr. Dominic, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Upon which law authority is the Nigerian Broadcasting? System well, it's a uh, PRC decree, and again, uh, that is why when I heard that laws were being crafted, the bill was in the making, I said I would support it to the best of my ability, simply because all along this institution that we're talking about has been operating on a PRC decree. 
Square cos square plus square. It is called the square of that degree that you are not in Yes. yes. What a functional, functional role of the, the broadcasting system, natural broadcasting system, as contained in that degree. The functional role. The functional role, uh, according to my understanding, a copy of which I have here, is to promote growth and development, promote integration, promote rural communication, allow for our people to interact village to village, and what have you. It's a long list of things, but chiefly amongst that is what I have just added up to you. To promote reconciliation or integration? Yeah. Did I say to be division? No, sir. Did I say to deny one certain of the Problems? No, sir. Will you allow critical opposition to you? Attestation? Yes, sir. You are on a call? Yes, sir. It's been recorded. Yes, sir. I will allow critical opposition views because those people are Liberian citizens. How is the set of the, the system LBS funded in keeping with that decree? Sixty percent comes from the government. Forty percent is revenue generated, and because of that, I, in my statement, I ask for you to give us budgetary support because uh, the LBS, according to my understanding, was hard hit, and that's why they ran from two hundred sixty employees to one hundred forty-six being on the staff. So if we are to get back, I'm appealing that the legislature look at the appropriations because 60 percent and having 40 percent come from revenue generation is not going to cut it, sir. Do you uh, have an appreciation of the wisdom behind why the system was required by that to create the law to fund itself 60 percent and the national budget does the balance 40 percent to you? Have an appreciation of the wisdom behind that question. Yes, sir. The, the government is providing the 60% and then the 40%. Yeah, right, right. But the wisdom behind it at the time saw that institution as the one eye man in the land of the blind. And that was in the 80s. Uh, they did not have serious competition. And there was market for uh, advertisement, there was market for campaigning, there was market for products, whatever. It's not like that today. There's a proliferation of radio and television stations, cables, and everything, and that has changed. So the wisdom behind that cannot suffice any longer. So I don't want uh, the same question where <coughs> we need to get it. Yes. Uh, for Mr. Nobini, I will disagree with you. I will disagree with you because radio is content. The content when you have listener, and the more listener, the audience you have, you will have a management. You will do business. So if people are not doing business with ERBC, it is because of what ERBC has made the set into. Correct? Absolutely. So that, that answer should suggest to me that if you can restore the content of your business, the quality of the news, at a certain point in time, the headline of your business news was about the president, the middle part of it was about the president, and even at the end of the news, something about the president, they were putting on it. <laughs> so if the content and the, the programs were all hijacked by partisan programs. So the content. Yeah. The content became poor and it became distasteful to the listening audience. So everybody has to hear this. Do you have any intention to restore? Your business, to what the was intended to be. Thank you, Senator. I want to share 
your wisdom, and uh, we'll definitely work in that direction. Yes, it's not only my intention, I have the passion for it. Uh, during the years growing up, we only used to wait for our boys to say, split, baboos, ali, wadka, or wali. And don't forget to say goodbye before you leave. Goodbye. People just wanted to hear it. When television came on, to formulate programs and policies to make the system work. My job would not be to precede the president, but to make sure there's growth and development. What's the difference between your current role, should you be confirmed, and the role you occupied at the Ministry of Information, where you were being sat for the special detail of government for the opposition question? Well, the difference there is clearly uh, defined. I have a role at LDS, and like I said repeatedly, is to formulate programs and policies. At the Ministry of Information, I was Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs. I was responding to uh, allegations. I was responding to uh, press. I was responding to uh, people that saw the government in a certain way. And that is not, that, that will not be my role. We are not here as a nominee of the Ministry of Information. Yes, sir. But you serve in our role before. Mm -hmm. Your performance yes, sir. in our role, your conduct in our role, yes, sir. is also being questioned here. Yes, sir. What is the functional, key functional uh, wisdom behind the formation of the Ministry of Information vis a vis LBS question? Well, to be honest with you, Honorable Senator, up to today, I still ask myself the, the roles played by the state-run broadcasting system, the office of the press secretary, the deputy minister for public affairs and the Ministry of state, the minister of information, and his four deputies to include the deputy minister for press and public affairs. However, sir, it's government. It's not me. You have the answer. You. The vote. The, the, the wisdom behind the formation of LDS in keeping with that decree and the wisdom behind the formation of and the purpose for the formation or establishment of the Ministry of Information. Yes, sir, that's what my, that, that exactly was my response to you. That indeed, when you ask me the wisdom, I think that ministry was probably established before probably I was born in the 60s. I wouldn't know what they were teaching at the time. They, but they, when it comes to the purpose as contained in the act. To propagate government's programs and policies. Hold it right there. 
What's your purpose of changing the decree establishing its elders? Similarly, and that is to promote. So the elders had to propagate. Did you promote government policies and, and government reconciliation integration at the Ministry of Information? No, at the Ministry of Information, I was to propagate. Propagate what? Government programs and policies. Attack opposition? No, sir. We spoke to opposition. We spoke to opposition. Yes, sir. So even if the opposition is a member of the government asking the legislature, and you chose to support the members of the legislature that are part of the ruling party. I do not recall going after members of the legislature no, no. in that. I do not recall. No, no. No. So, so this song was here, similarly honorable, and denied that he did a video. He deleted the video from his page, and he came and challenged the Senate. Yes, sir. Why he did not do it, that we have downloaded the video. Yes, sir. It was based upon we, we denied him, the Senate denied him, not because he issued the certain statements in the video, but he came here and denied making the statements on a deception because he had deleted the video without knowing that we had downloaded the video. Yes, sir. I'm asking you again, the honorable. Yes, sir. Is there no video of you attacking government officials in the opposition? Question. Again, uh, honorable senator, like I said, the role I played in the government was the role I was assigned to play. So, uh, the, the, the purpose of the formation, the establishment of the Ministry of Information was to promote integration of government policies, government programs, and to inform the Liberian people about what government was doing. Yes, sir. You chose to, to, to attack government officials who disagree constructively with the very government program because of the way it was being done, vis a vis protecting and promoting government officials and the ruling party. Correct? Again, honorable senator. So let me tell you. I'm not, yeah. Let me tell you. So I'm going to give you a microphone. Right. You're going to hear the microphone. Right. At the OBS. Will you do the same? No, sir. Our intents of reference are clear, and I've repeated that over and over. No, you can't read back to The intents of reference are not much different. Integration or, or reconciliation, promulgation of government policy. And government policy can be promulgated by diversion of views, diversity of views. For instance, we stay in this chamber, we debate issues pro and con, and then we derive a vote. But the Ministry of Information, including ERBC, will take opposition positions for attack against the government, disrespectful, divisive, and, 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 and all of that stuff. And you are the Ministry of Information, you saw that as your role. By the time they said this senator disagree with the president budget, fast presentation. This other lawmaker here disagree with the president flying private jet, fast presentation. Well, now I won. <laughs> <laughs> now we should send you here to, to do the same question. No, sir, if confirmed, I told you that I will be within the confines of the terms ascribed or subscribed to me, and that is to formulate the programs and policies that will even run the institution or the system. Thank you. Uh, ERBC is supposed to be across the country. You have giving us a gloomy picture or situation or state of your business as you know it. I'm sure you have some consultation. You know everything that is wrong at your business. What will be your anticipated monthly income? Question. 
Well, I've never worked at LDS before, <laughs> but I'm told that the Director General of LDS gets anywhere between 3000 to 4000 That's what I was made to understand by people who've been there before, but I've never been there before, but that's what I was told. So the people told you that 200, 260, but the 260 employees were in place and 146 there. Yes. The people told you 27 support of detention. Yes. The people told you 24 contractors uh, uh, stay around. Yeah. But they tell you exactly how much the monthly salary is going to be. They were not exact on what was said, but this uh, is the way I'm running close to it. Yes. They were not saying that they don't know how to Well, that was what I was told, sir. <laughs> okay. 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 Yes, sir. My father. Yes, sir. Here, busy like my colleagues have said, and our concern is supposed to disseminate government program and information to our people. I think you are busy come out the country. And you need to engage with community radio station. Since you've done a, an assessment of the situation at your business, to know how many gallon of fuel you need per hour because of a generator or a Have you done a budget program here? Have you done a budget with the cost of what you, what you need to get money? Well, based on what I know so far and the uh, conversations I've held so far, uh, LBO stands at about 1,086,000. Mm -hmm. By 85% of that is for salaries. To run an effective system, again, uh, will require a team sitting down and putting together a real budget. But the estimation, you will need around $2 billion to at least be able to put together what we are asking for. We also uh, have said to some individuals that if confirmed, we will look at alternative energies especially for our substations in the various counties to at least cut back on the huge budget uh, allotment for fuel. The vice chair of the committee asked a question, and I want to give you back from it as a wind up. When the budget of the country is submitted to the legislature, it's about five to six hundred page document. The media, most time, and select people take the budget, five to six hundred page document, and open it to the portion that has the legislature. And if it is a seven hundred million budget, the legislature has sixty five million. That sixty five million is the discussion for the whole year. Nobody talks about. 65 taking away from the balance that is left of 700 million. And the reason most of the people think the legislature just should not give me assist is because the, the private media and right for the two will take excerpts excerpt of who said what during session, during committee hearing? Especially, it depends on the editorial policy of that media institution. So, media institution, editorial policy, and nothing positive will be on our station about this other politician or this other <laughs> Some media editorial policy. If we can't find anything negative about this government official or the government entity, we would not promote it even if they do something positive. Only ELBC can do that generally for the people. Do you, will you consider 
or will you make this a business? To have fear of deceit when you lie, the seventh delay of religion, Tuesday and Thursday. Do you complete the rule <coughs> that this is not a proportion? This is not something that you must say because you want to be confirmed. This is not something that you must compare yourself to say or two or a four. But you want to look into that so that the people of this country, the only people who know what's happening here are the people, especially on social media, who have data to work, to listen to what's happening here. But there are very few who know the world. Will you bring the Senate deliver vision on your music? Thank you once again, Honorable Chairman. Let me make this firm commitment, not to be confirmed. It is the right of the people to be informed of how their government functions. It is not a privilege. If confirmed, I said to you and to this committee and to this honorable body, the rights of the people to be informed will be respected. And that is, if you do the people business here, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it is the right to be informed. I promise you, if confirmed, the Liberian people will enjoy the right to be informed. And that is so we um, just uh, lost signals from the Capitol building. Well, again, I want to take this time to welcome all of you to SKTV. We have other stuff to discuss. We have a lot to discuss today. Well, again, uh, it's good to be here. Steve, how are you doing? How are you, sir? How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, let me try to send this thing to Monk, the link to Monk. And I don't think I did. Uh, in Melbourne, folks, thank you for joining us. Uh, very, very interesting things are happening. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, give me a second here. Please share the show as you join us. You're listening to the, you were listening to the confirmation of uh, Eugene Fagon. Um, <laughs> for again, for me. And uh, his friend Dillon. <laughs> And they also say you're asking tough questions. <laughs> Good boys got jokes. <laughs> they also say you're being tough. You're asking tough questions. <laughs> anyway, we fought on Isa. We fought on Isa. Mr. Kane, I forgot to share the link with both Monk and uh, Milk I, Monk. Think, I think I did. Oh, okay. Um, I did share with you. But for some reason, I'm not hearing from Milk Monk. Uh, yeah. Let me let me continue with the show. Let me let me check on it. Yeah, folks, uh, folks, let's share the show. Good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Thank you for following SKTV as always. As you already know, today the show started with some serious. I don't want to use the word confusion, but very interesting things are happening. But we are following carefully. Uh, Millboy is joining us here. Uh, we have a, a lot of things to talk about today. A lot of happenings around the country. Let's see what Millboy is. In the two them become the number one radio station in Liberia. So we want to say thanks to you, uh, our own boss, like ability. So, folks, and a uh, moment from now on, we'll be linking with our team. And let me see, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> the is back on the radio after the. I think it will be on break. What going on, Steve? What's up, my man? I like to get the the play the play to you and I easy. Oh, wow, really? Look, Mark. Uh, let me say, Mark. Uh, Melbourne. Mm. Today, the conversation will interest the Liberian people. We are picking up from where we stopped yesterday. Okay. So, so share the show, um, as you all know, Yeah, we, share the show, uh, share the show. What are you doing? Please share the show. Yesterday, we had Dr. Allen White here. Um, mm. We had a very thought-provoking, stimulating conversation. Today, we want to take it a little further because credit to Front Page Africa, we're able to get the, the law that Prince Johnson always kept in. We're able to get it. 
will read it and will interpret it in simple English for our people. But not only that, we'll also read and interpret the, the Geneva Convention and the Rome Statute that the Liberian government signed off onto before Prince Johnson then could become politician. We'll also try to review, to read article, I think that on the seven of the Liberian Constitution, what Doden did. We will talk everything about how the legislature over the years and how people who do wrong have decided to shield, hide, and keep themselves from being accountable by using the quote unquote law. We'll get into that conversation today. So, share the issue. So, so um, <laughs> in, in, in other news, we. Mm -hmm. SKTV is um, is privileged to have with uh, us um, um, every documentation that has to do with the War Economic Crimes Court establishment. The document the scope of the operation document to be signed by Tosunyi Mabwakai. <laughs> document written to the United Nations and um, the core term of reference, how it will, how it will function, which part the Liberal government will play and the part the United Nations will play. It has, the one that has to do with security, the one that has to do with the possibility of having a court in a different country if necessary. Pretty much everything surrounding the establishment of war and economic crimes code, we have we are privileged to have the, the information. So the information is a lot. <laughs> we may not be able to digest it one day or two days. No, <laughs> too much. So we might go by, you know. Yeah. We might discuss one. We'll go, we'll go by piece, you know, piece by piece. Yeah. Depending on the topic of the day. But the good thing is that we having the information in our possession, we'll be able to answer a lot of questions from the Liberian people as to relate how, how, you know, the whole, even some of the questions we asked yesterday. I think we now have some of the answers, if not all the answers. Yep. So, and this was sent to SKT out of trust and for the purpose of educating the Liberian people. No, 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 no. You want to do that, that spoon, but when you you got to meet yourself. Yeah, so, um, for the for educational purposes only. Any questions surrounding the war and economic crimes code, how it's gonna look like, and uh, the role Labra will play, the money thing. I think when I say the information plenty, it plenty. It's plenty is a lot of information. And uh like I said, it's of trust, respect for the platform, respect for all of us that work with SKTV. We are privileged with that information so that we can be able to answer questions from Liberians as what is really, really going on and how things are going to look like. Some of these documents will really, really amaze you. Yeah, but we're not we're not we're not gonna post the documents on on the page. We're not gonna share with anybody. Uh maybe share internally for educational purposes only for us to be abreast with the issues and be able to answer questions from the Liberian people, both in Liberia and in the diaspora. But I can tell you, 
we have all the information. When I say all, all of it, <laughs> everything, we have it. I just want to add that, Steve. Um, yeah, I, may, I may not stay on the show longer today. Yes. I have some uh, things to attend to. Yes. And by the way, I want to take this time to welcome the month of Ramadan and to also say kudos to our Muslim brothers and sisters who are fasting and who also, you know, are not fasting because of their own condition or situation. We want to say happy Ramadan. We want to say Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Uh, we I will speak to you on fasting, and uh, we are on this journey for about thirty days. Is we're going to be doing this for thirty days, one month long. It's kind of challenging, but it is an obligation for all Muslims. I want to say kudos to everybody uh, who is faxing right now to tell you thank you. And let's, you know, have a conversation. So, Steve? Yes, Mr. Kane. Uh, I, I saw something today, Steve. It was a 10-over ceremony from the ministry, from the former Minister of Internet Affairs, a Minister Vani Salif, to now new minister, Kela O. Rebo, um, Francis Numali, who say he's a killer, who say he's an old rebel, and he's now the minister of internet affairs. It is it's a sad day for Liberia. It's a sad story. Uh, we were in back on Telling the Liberian people who this guy is, it's not just going to be today. We will do it every day. We inform the Liberian people, the kind of people Joseph Yuma Buaka is bringing in government. So that anything happen tomorrow, the Liberian people will be surprised. I just wanted to add that, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Uh, we'll, we'll quickly, Mr. Kane, in public, I just want to. I request that the documents we've received that maybe we we'll take a day or two to digest the information because they plenty so that we can expand on it from a comprehensive standpoint. So yes, we do have the documents in our possession. Like we always on SKTV, we like to have facts or information before we speak about it. We don't do your, they say, I say thing, eh? or the person say they want, that person say that one. So in the next few days, we'll continue on this conversation. But Monk, my man, what say you? Today that Monday, happy Monday. And again, um, the Ramadan season starts already. The prayer. Of so so, so uh, before Monk comes in, I just... Monk, um, to, um, just, just, just a second, Steve. I, 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 with regards to the document, we are speaking about the communication sent to the President of the United States. Communication sent to the President of the United Nations, communication in agreement that's supposed to be signed between the United Nations and the Liberian government, communication and the law, the scope of the operation, the term of reference, the, the constitution that will guide the court, commitment from the United States, from the United Nations, and from the world. In fact, the timeline, the timeline of the court, also the finances of the court. So when we say the information is plenty, it is a lot. We will not even be able to discuss it one day, two day, or three days. We will take our time, peruse it, so we can be you know, more informed about what's going on, and we will be able to answer all of your questions with regards to this whole war and economic crimes code. And I must add, the reason why this document is sent to FKTV is for educational purposes, only for us to be able to educate the Liberian people as to what is really, really going on, what it entails. 
and what just it means for Liberia. Even regarding the protection of the witnesses or victims, prison thing, everything, I mean, everything, everything. When I say everything, it means everything. I just want to add this so the people know that what we're talking about here, you know, it's just beyond common men, common men's understanding. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Kane. Uh, Monk, what say you, my man? Um, happy Monday to you. Happy New Week. What's going on? You know, it's happy Monday, happy New Week, and happy Ramadan to our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. You know, I was doing some research last night. Uh, I was just reading, randomly reading, and something came out of my mind. You see, there's a reason they call Islam, Christianity, and Judaism Abrahamic relig I mean, religions, because they are all the same except for few minute differences yep. in the christian faith we call it a season of lent or 40 days period where we pray we fast and we give help to the poor mm -hmm. the call it ramadan it's the same old thing and the jewish people got the name. that's what i'm saying we are getting a term in human history wherein i want to see pastors preaching in mocks and i want to see imam preaching in church so that those similarities and the different views that we share on religion because think about it or uh, steve Right, just think about this. There is no culture or religion that has all the answers to life. Everybody got their own way of trying to perceive God. It's the same God, but different form of worship and different belief systems. So technically, we are all the same, except the way how we do things. But unfortunately, people don't get these simple things. Let like we say we get talk about what? Ramadan. So I was thinking, I said, but then if Ramadan is the holy season of prayer fasting, it's the same thing. We just give it a different name. That's why they call it Abrahamic religion. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, they are almost the exact same, except for slight differences. But anyway, we're here today to we'll follow up with the... <laughs> well, Monk, speaking quickly, quickly of religion before we move further, uh, yeah. because we are Christians, um, you know, and this month is very, very important for our Muslim brothers and sisters for the next 30 days. Um, we are supposed to show support morally, spiritually and physically in all ways, shapes or forms that include respecting them and honoring them in this month during a time of fasting. Um, but it will interest you to know that in our religion, in Christianity, um, the Christian there yesterday killed an older woman in the name of she was a witchcraft. Oh yeah, I saw that video, it was so, it was so let me, sad. Let me say something to this effect because your pastors, your deacons, your spiritual leaders, your reverends, your prophets, your apostles have infused in your head, they have embedded in your soul, in your minds, that you must kill witchcraft. Those pastors and those leaders that you have that taught you those things, they didn't teach you right. They did not teach you the right thing. You're here again. They did not teach you the right thing. I know most of you base it on suffer not a wish to live. You have no understanding of the interpretation, the interpretation of that. Of that. Yeah. Your pastor doesn't even know what he is reading. Your pastor has no clue what he is reading. No, he has no clue. So that means... So, so, so that means... Even though I add up to you, Steve, you know, that just so silent, even though you you, you, you already started with that conversation, that just so, I don't know, embarrassing and so terrible for us as people to see that some, sometimes we, we describe some of our old folks sometimes because they are poor and we call them witchcraft. I don't know how come. Like I keep asking people, how, since since I was born up to my age, in fact time, have you seen uh, a witchcraft that have been rich or an old man who is rich that have been called witchcraft? But it's, it's always the poor, the poor old folks back home, it's where Africa that uh, are always been described as witchcraft. Yeah. So to just add up to what, yeah. So, so, so to just add up to what you, you, you just said, you know, that's just so terrible. Even the Ten Commandment that they that they read, or in fact that we read, the Bible says, "That shall not take." Well, in fact, that shall not kill. Don't take away any man's life. But how can now you are Christian, even if the person is witchcraft, as you claim? So, so that also gave you the authority to kill them. So, you know, Monk, let me say Monk, um, Melbourne, before you yeah, get yeah. So, 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 Steve, let me just chip in a little bit uh, before I go. Um, sure, please. In as much yes. as I'm not a Christian, um, 
I want us to be a little bit careful. Um, how sure are we that those that were involved in that art, they were Christian or they were all Christian? Because, not because they were killed by some Liberians. We have no idea whether or not those that committed the art, they were all Christians. So we should just be mindful. So will not be seen as we are trying to vilify or somehow demonize the Christian faith. So let's not give a lot of you know attention to the religious aspect of it, but trying to dehumanize people, trying to actually reduce people to nothing under the pretext of calling them witchcraft should be discouraged by all Liberians. So the reason why I'm saying this, we have no clue, personally I have no clue as to whether those who were involved in the art, you know, they were all Christians. My, there are people in Liberia, they are not Muslim, they are not Christian. And not because you are not a Muslim, that automatically you are Christian, no. Not because you are now a Christian, you are automatically a Muslim. There are people that were no religion. There are, there are people in Liberia that believe in worshiping something else. Some of them got no religion. Some of them, just because they are not Muslim, they consider themselves Christian, but they, are, they don't even practice Christianity. They don't go to church. They don't speak good of anything or anybody. They don't even read open Bible or Quran or anything to read. They just consider some of them call themselves Christian, but they are never even Christians. And those are the ones that have been spoiling the name of all the religion. They are even Muslim, they are more Muslim, they are more Christians. People then who say because, because of their name, because of their tribe, by virtue of that, they are automatically Muslim or automatically Christian. But they don't practice Christianity or they don't practice Islam. But people will just look at it and just attach some religions, you know, denomination to them when they are, in fact, not representatives of that particular religion. I'm just saying this to say, I want us to be mindful. Like I said, I'm not going to stop you guys from talking about anything you want to say about Christianity because you guys are Christian. You know better about Christianity than me. And you are in a better position to say anything you want to say about it. But I just want us to be very mindful unless we know for a fact that those that were involved with this art were all Christian and they are actually Christian. I don't want to add that. But thank, thank you, you. Mr. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for that point. I think when some of these religious fanatics, these people who switch from politics defending to religion defending, will listen carefully. When people speak, they will understand that we don't speak to bring one religion or to just say all of them. I'll go back to what I say and I stand by what I say on this platform 100%. I dare some of your pastors, your deacon, your reverend, and your prophets, I dare them to come in. Come here and make the case for the religion that we all serve under. I said some Christians, some pastors, some religious leaders have taught our people that suffer not to okay kill the witch. So they go about trying to hunt people in the name of this thing that wish the other person that wish. I can say here for a fact that it might not have been 100% Christians that did it out yesterday. That is a fact. We don't know the, the truth about it. But I can also say 95% or 100% of those who have that mentality the one yeah, that came with For sure. That's a fact. <laughs> so I'm not going to miss I don't even know that part in, 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 you know, about people preaching. Uh, so people can preach to tell people to kill Yes. Them. Oh yeah, Mr. Oh yes, uh, 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 look, look. Uh, uh. In the churches, in mm -hmm. the churches, what they teach is all this fire will come down, burn the one. They are burning witches. They, can you imagine a pastor? A pastor positions you. Some of the feedback coming there is very loud. Can you imagine a pastor or some pastors in a church? All they preach about is they look at you and say, "All your things are happening in your life. That your man, that the wish there." That they wish in your family. Oh, so the time you are young, your mom, your mom, not wish your power, not wish they couldn't get rid of you. 
you get older. You know how to do that to play on your mind from a psychological standpoint, keep you in slavery and in bondage. Or the other wish here for your family. Let me tell you something that wish no wish. So your pastor that witchcraft, that how you manage to know say your man I wish. Maybe you need to start thinking about it in our context. How your pastor know your man I wish? How? <laughs> Maybe your pastor that witchcraft. We're not going to sit down around here and fool around. Our people need to get serious. We need to get serious. You are taking the life of someone in the name of witchcraft. How is the witchcraft stopping the church from moving? How? In fact, if anything, if you look at it from a logical standpoint, the witchcraft is getting your pastor what to do. But your pastor is lazy. The pastor, the only thing they can see that witchcraft and prosperity in your life, they can see themselves manipulating you. And when we come and talk about it, people want to start for us. People want to, um, for us to pinpoint. People want for us to look at the word of God. And position Steve, people. Steve, Steve, really see for me. You are messing with the wrong person. I got 100% agree with everything that you have just said because some of us, we are witness to some of the things that you just say, my brother. Because when you say these things, sometimes some of our sisters, our mothers, our brothers and sisters out in the field are, everything in this life is spiritual. Everything no, about no. their life is spiritual. Even to go out there to work, they won't work. They feel that no, everything no. about their life is spiritual. So they got to pray to kill the devil. They got, look, I was reading the book of Job on yesterday, Job chapter 1, 6 to 7, where God was interacting with Satan, asking Satan, where do you, where you been? So that one tells you that even the Almighty Creator, he, look, I don't understand us as people. No, so I mean, no, it's just so terrible. Let me get into it. Let me, get into the, let me, get, let me say that. And like I said again, maybe people need to listen. I said some of your pastors. Let me say that maybe I can talk fast sometimes. People won't pick it up. I said some of your pastors, some of your religious leaders. Monk, we're getting. Let me say monk. Maybe we're getting a huge feedback. I said some of your pastors and some of your spiritual leaders. Let me say this. You all need to wake up from reality to reality, my people. Wake up from your slumber. Some of the things we are taught or we were taught by some religious leaders, some pastors, they are absolutely wrong. It is a manipulative tactics that they've used to keep you in bondage, in slavery, and so. But I agree with you that your subconscious mind has been sunk into this thing. For example, let me get you so, some so, me, so, 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 me, so, 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 Steve, yes, well, I, I have one question for you. They ask a question, I'll give you an example. I, I want to yeah. let's say example where the politics. All right, so the question is compare during those days, uh the missionaries that used to come, or in fact that used to go around, compare their start of life, their start of teaching, and their start of, of doing things. Well, not a day. What going on? Is there any slight difference or maybe differences? So I will I will I will, I will, I will answer your question later. But let me let me give you an example I want to give quick um um no Maybe so we can get into the politics. That like one can always say we can't get into the religious aspect. There's a huge feedback coming from you. I don't know what's going on. So, like I said, some religious leader, I'm not saying all of them, I would never blanketly say all, and I would never blanketly attack the Christian religion, but I will also openly criticize the Christian religion when they are silent on things that support they're supposed to be speaking on. I will. I'm a Christian, and there is no way, shape, or form of leaving Christianity. I will leave Christianity when I'm convicted that I'm supposed to leave. So I'm not worried about y'all. I'm not worried about your fanatic, your sycophantic, defensive mind that you care about, your care in politics. You're carrying religion. You're carrying anywhere you go because some of you, you some of you, you have inferiority complex. You think you must defend to feel important or to feel relevant. That's that's you. That's your lifestyle. I don't have a problem with that. That's how you've been living. Continue with that. It suits you. But let me get to the example I want to give you. There's a scripture that says you should love the Lord with all your heart. You know, most Christians walk around, and we have been taught in most of these churches that even that word heart means your exact heart that in your chest. And that's true. Like I said, most of your pastors, they don't know nothing. They are God called me pastor there. They understand nothing. They know nothing. They know not the interpretations of these scriptures from where they come, the originality of them. They don't understand anything. The only thing they understand is hustling. I say, your BB men are going to get BB rings. BB hats on their head passing around. Most of them, they know nothing about the Bible. They know nothing about the originality. You know what they know? They know how to be crooks, lazy men. And women who are passing around in the name of God. That's why they are selling oil to you. And they're selling oil to you. And you can buy the oil. You can buy the oil now. The holy oil you can buy. How long have you been buying it? Your problem not solved. 
And you can buy salt and carry it to them. In fact, the salt they want you to buy, they stand, they want you to buy from the church. Yeah, and they got special people the position for you to go and buy from. When you didn't buy the one, you buy the salt, you buy black bucket, you buy the other one, you buy that other one. And that's how you're making that. And you say that you tell me that somebody tell you to buy all the things for you to pray. Your prayer more than some of them, they're eating cuckoo chicken and riding pee pee car with the money that you send in there. And they tell you, say you get married next year, you not get married. You married? You know, wake up. That means, that means you should be on your foolishness that you go going on with. You married? Your prayer more than the looking. Let me tell you something. They're not fasting for you. The money you send, they're cooking, heavy food and they're eating. Then the children, they're laughing at you because you are a fool. They're laughing and making fun of you. Your prayer more than your prayer more than even looking healthy from you. While you are passing around looking and you, you're looking sick. They're enjoying themselves. And I mean, you also be in a slavery mentality. While you're you slave to somebody else, you get somebody saying, I'm like, bro, say, oh, they're taking 30 days for you. Somebody's will be taking 30 days for you while you're partying. You, you serious? You see where man are passing? You not serious? And yeah, I suppose they take you serious. You see where they even Google food. They write Google car. They 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 uh 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 uh. Get they they they. Why? One of the only brave uh or maybe one of the brave or uh, maybe prophet by then that I really know. Well, maybe that I uh, I started reading about uh, John the Baptist. I think John the Baptist was one the brave prophet I ever seen. That used to go to the king every day to talk to the king. About life, about what happened, how the king and and uh treating the people going on and so on. But uh, you know that's in life you anyway. Your, we got your, yeah. you get your pastors, you get your pastor children in international school. Some of your pastor, your children are going to international school. Your children are in school. Then you very government official. You serious? <laughs> I told you guys, I told you guys the last time we need to be doing some. I told you guys the last time. Government school. Say you you saying that you tie your faith on government. The play you pay your money that is all pay school for your children for your children. Why you can't go there and go ask a pastor to reform you? Go ask a child to reform you. Why is it a whole why you don't buy you? Why is it your problem not go away yet? Go ask your pastor to reform you. That will make jokes. The joke on your and your pastor there. Not more. Go ahead, I'm on side with you, man. I said, I told you the last time we got to start doing some religious show. It will not be brands or religious show because we have the opportunity to be on the radio. And some of these ills in society is affecting our country in a way unimaginable. Except we have some guests. Maybe we will get some guests. But we will start delving deep into these topics because that thing is reaching tipping point. It's become your national security threat as also. That you can Seriously? wake up and kill an innocent person in the name of religion. And I think it's about time we start uh, we're visiting this whole issue of capital punishment in Liberia because the way people take people like this day, I have never seen it in my lifetime growing up in Liberia. It's just a whole different generation. It's just a whole different thing. It's an abuse to all the institutions, including the church. I don't know about Islam that much, but I think they have been on a more control than the Christian faith with the whole new movement they call charismatic Christian with all the holy oil and praying for marriage and the sons and one of Christianity. Because growing up, I know for sure when the Catholic, the Baptist, and people in Liberia, they were the one building schools, they were the one building hospitals, they were the one helping the poor. And these days... And that's the missionary, right? That's the missionary yeah. that, 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 that we're um, talking about or maybe asking Steve and you also about as to what are happening uh, maybe during those days and now. So, so let me tell you something, Melbourne. Let me tell you about some of the missionaries, not all of them. Let me tell you about some. In fact, uh, I know for a fact that I think a month or two ago, there were some missionaries that were sent from the United States to Liberia. When I call it religion for some reasons. Let me tell you this today. Me and my man, I'm here to talk about this with the issue already. Wow. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not in the top. The this time from me, boy, is too. I mean, well, I don't know what's going on today. Yeah, me, boy, I don't want to feed back today, my man. Oh, so you know some of the missionaries. Okay, much better. You can you can even commission people to do something. and left with a human heart. It left with a person. It left with the willpower to do what is right or what is wrong. Please don't get me wrong. Christianity and other religion might have migrated or made its way easily into our culture and our tradition through um, maybe missionaries and so forth. Some of them were very helpful and very kind. But again, they were on a mission. Pay attention to that word. They were on a mission. That's why they're called missionary. 
And when you're on a mission, you're obligated to do certain things for a certain time, you know, and you have a scope of practice or whatever it is. But I just want to say this as I close on this whole uh, killing of that older lady yesterday. Um, if we say that Liberia, that traditional country or whatever it is, and we get Zobi people, why again go over the Zobi men? And we get Zobi men in the country? Why again go over the Zobi people? Why again go consult the Zobi people too now? Yeah. You, you are conflicting yourselves in your own confusion. You are. And you are targeting the less fortunate people amongst us to get rid of them. You kill an older woman in the name of... Well, you're not looking at your eyeball open. You saw Westcraft forever. It's all be history. Yeah. You saw Westcraft fall down. The Westcraft will fly and she fell down. It has all be history. Yeah. In fact, she's all be seen as a hero. In fact, maybe she will not be Westcraft again because she has been exposed. The man has set her in the kingdom. Why kill her though? How does it set? How does it solve the issue of witchcraft and other things in Liberia? Why kill her? What is the authority saying? What is the government saying? And Joseph Baga, a traditional man. What, yeah. what, what are they saying? And, and, and when you talk to old people in that country, they say you not respect old people yeah. and are to that traditional country. Traditional country. Where are all so the witch, so witchcraft will be accepted in Liberia because we 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 exactly. it, they are recognized. Zanza Kawas will be the chief of all Wesco. Why can't you go well, and kill Why are they going to look for Zanza Kawas? Yeah. The young people, the men who, who, who are the boss men for all of them, why are they going to look for him? I don't understand you people. I don't understand your mindset. You are so confused because you have been brainwashed into something that is not reality. And you take it off on people. You, you Look, you take it off on the wrong people. Also, you can openly accept Zanza Kawa. As the chief zoo, and you are proud of it, and you give them you, offices to you get them offices, you fund ministry. them, <laughs> you get them ministry, you fund their activities. Julie yeah. Andy, culture ambassador. Yeah, yeah. You, you are proud of those things. But when you see one witchcraft that was flying that made a mistake, quote unquote, according to y'all, then you kill that one witchcraft. So then why not just dissolve the whole zoo thing there? Yeah, and go after all the zoda in the country now. Why not just all do that? Zoos and bodios. Yes, you are so moralist. You are so moral. I mean, and you feel like the issue of zoo and other things that are bad in the country. You are confused. You have been brainwashed. You need to wake up to reality. Let me tell you the people that who you're supposed to be going after, and we discuss them here today. Your lawmakers. Those are the dangerous people. That the people that are keeping you in poverty and witchcraft. You need to expose your pastor and walk away from that fake church that you're in. Some of your pastors, you need to walk away from the fake church. The fake churches where your pastors are piled up. The children are... You see the mother said the nigga car, the mother Ryan. You still suffering with $20 wig and fake eyelashes and eyebrows. That are the people you need to go after. That are the churches you need to start spending your money in and start giving yourself a hard time. You need to wake up, my people. This is reality. This is life. You need to wake up. You are still slave in the 21st century in your mindset. You are slave in your mindset. That's why you live the way you live. So you need to wake up. Until you can wake up to some and stand up to some of these pastors, even ask them the hard questions. When you go for Bible studies, prayer meetings, and other things, ask them the tough questions. We are going nowhere. We are going nowhere. We are wasting our time. We'll be targeting the wrong people. It's called trans transfer aggression. You are transferring your aggression to the wrong people. You get your law, make on it. We can tell you why your law make on it to you. We can tell you. We can tell you. Why you do? You will not do nothing. You only come around for information all day. They give you information. Normally, when people get information, the responsibility is to act on the information on the you information, have. Yeah. You don't do it. <laughs> you don't do it. You want from one platform to another platform to get information to amp yourself up to just get your pressure up all day. <laughs> what do you do? You don't react. Like yesterday, me and Monk, last night, me and Monk were having a serious conversation. And Monk used a word, what is the righteous anger? I thought about that word throughout last night, Monk, when we left the phone. I thought about it. I said, that question is deep. I didn't see it like that. We don't see it. Your children are dying. You're still making excuses for government officials. When was the last time you ever opened up to hold your government accountable? To hold your favorite lawmaker accountable and say, well, yeah, I don't understand why you quiet on the one. When was the last time some of you asked Delon? How many people you not appoint? You not tell the government to. When the last time you go asking that question, you're passing the round. 
When the last time someone you asked Yomri Kanga Lawrence, the war of the issue of war and economic crime, because some of you who have called winning advocate, I see some of you bouncing around beyond all. You celebrate and elevate people who are hurting you, and you think you're living life. You really think, and then they, they, they push you to come and attack us because we're calling them up. Can you can't read for anything? Let your pastor send you that Holy Ghost foolishness that you got going on in your churches. Some of your churches there. That you're, that in your church, you're my care about because me, I don't do. I, I will not even come, I will not even, I will not even address you. That your pastor, I will address your bishop that you respect, that him or her, I will bring on a show here and tell them that they don't know what they're talking, that why they confuse you, that why you are confused because you are a product of the teaching. You are a product of the teaching. When I see you behaving confusedly in public as a Christian, I know that your pastor is confused, I know that your bishop is confused. Because if they were teaching you the right thing, you would behave rightly. You know what the Bible says? Teach your child in a way that he will grow. When he grow old, he will not depart from it. So that foolishness that is better in your head, it comes from your church, it comes from your pastor. Bring your Christian feelings here. I read it for you. Thank God said me, I'm a Christian. I read it for you. And I almost came Bible back to back. The subject I focus on when we're doing religion, that Bible. I understand it inside also. Even from the Hebrew, the original translation to the Greek. And up to today, in Christian modern Bible, I understand it. Bring your bishop here. Let me show you that your bishop is a two-faced man or woman. Bring some of your bishop. SKTV will be open. We can have those conversations. You're, in, you're embracing a bunch of criminals there. A bunch of crooks there who's exploiting your, using your, you ain't get very there. There are people that we're talking to you don't get very But the same thing, apart from the religion, after the same thing is happening at a societal level, right? You look at our kid. You say, okay, he's a Zogo. Okay, he went and steal your cell phone, right? And then people will maul that kid to death. I was like, if you're going to maul this kid, you find all you have to take into consideration. I'm not encouraging kids to be out there stealing from people or threatening people's life. But you got public features that rip you off of millions of dollars. You're going to stone some kid to death for yeah. stealing a cell phone or a motorbike. And you're going to take a life. You're going to take a life in the name that he stole. If you really want to be that wicked and heartless against a criminal, I want you guys walking to the Capitol building and stoning some people. That's what I want to see happening. Yeah. Because they're ripping you off. They are the one that making your law. They are the ones stealing the most resources. They are the one putting you in poverty, like you said. But no, you don't turn your anger toward them. Some little innocent kid. You know, you know one thing? There is a statistic in America that says anytime you have economic hardship in any distressed community, that's where the crime rate can increase. So, crime is associated with economic factors that were in terms of job and poverty. I tell people if the living condition in that country were better, you was, you won't see most of those kids on the street that try to steal or harm people at night. It also has an economic implication. But no, you will stone people to death. You will maul them, burn them with tire, take their life. But yet they want to steal the most from you. Your lawmakers, your president, you come and glorify them. Sick society, man. You sick people. Mom, thank you, bro. Let, let's get into your law, maker. Um, some of you know the religious people who acquire on everything that's going on in the country who come into your law, maker, and who you elect them. At least your church, you can choose your pastor. That one, I free will think, but the one who you stay in line to elect. Let me let me tell you what it did to your monk. Um, over the years, Senator Prince Johnson, who happened to be one of the biggest men of God in the country, by the way, <laughs> uh, be wary, <laughs> your jokes. You're serious. Yeah, we are got jokes. Prince John, who is a renowned man of God in the country, who God has called after killing, allegedly, or participating or leading to the killing of a certain president, Samuel Kayando, who is a reverend, according to him, God called him, but he's still, uh, he's also on a sanction list. Uh, he's a warlord, and he boasts of it, never repented for his sin, never asked anybody for forgiveness. He brags about it. Prince Johnson always in the habit of saying, I think many of you now hear it, uh, the, the country granted him amnesty. But what say you about the amnesty thing that Prince Johnson been talking about? Because again, credit to Front Page Africa, we've got the actual amnesty document. Uh, the law that was signed and uh, sent out way back by lawmakers in uh, 2003. 2003, can you imagine? Yes. It, it, was, a, it was a hidden legislation. It was, a, it was almost like these guys, look, <laughs> in our country, that's why I keep asking where is the righteous anger and our people could care less. 
Awa I told you the big the biggest problem like brother people who are affected the most they don't they don't pay attention to politics they don't know what's going on they believe that the way how we live over there or the way people do things is just normal it's standard operating procedure so even if you give them this information they'd be like you know what we have tried so many different I mean variations of leaders and we haven't gotten the results so the people can just do what they want to do the few that know what's happening they are barely driven they want job and the vast majority of people that have been affected they are not actually in tune to politics until maybe election time before they start paying attention. But that's the sad thing about democracy. You don't wait till election to just change popular feature for the sake of changing public feature. You got to follow their activity. You got to follow their, their footprint. These criminals in Liberia, those war mongers and killers, they were thinking into the future. That article you sent me that I read, those guys, you know, they created something like a an insurance policy. They knew that at a certain point in time, they were going to come after them for war and economic crimes court. So what they did, they, they, they came together and wrote a legislation secretly, like a dead man switch, like an insurance policy stole that whenever a war crimes court come about, they will be able to cut that particular legislation. And I was surprised because I've never come across this document before. It's not a document, it's just an article, <laughs> but we're referencing a document. <laughs> so I went over and I was like, wow, this country is such a sick society. And that's the reason Prince Johnson is always quoting amnesty. And he always reference. That is why I asked Dr. Allen White. I asked Dr. Allen White on the show yesterday when our viewers and everybody was listening. I asked him, when it comes to amnesty, are there any provision in amnesty law that gave war criminals a free pass? He said, no. Matter of fact, we have international law that, that trump these local laws whether it's a constitution because if your country is a signatory to any globalist institution whether it's the united nations whether it's world health organization they will override your local laws so you, they, they try to protect themselves but unfortunately somebody were not thinking as to on the global level they were thinking only in liberia so, so we have so, the article maybe we can so, go so, over so, we're gonna go away really quick uh let, let we'll, we'll ask no more if they want to go to the radio so we'll hold it because we won't go over it and then also go over what the room statute says and what the Geneva Convention says so that we can put both of them in context. Because this thing was written in 2003. Now we never had an elected government. You're listening to this, oh? We never had an elected government up until that mean constitution was suspended after Charles the left. Everything that was done during the, 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 the internet government I think it was around Julie Bryant time when he wrote this thing. I stand to be corrected. That was internal government. Constitution not take play yet. Because LNN came around 2006. They came to power. 2005, 2006. I remember the election in 2005. So we have to put this in context for us to tell you what if Prince Johnson can be talking when he said he's exempt from going to the war and economic crimes court. What they did. Let me tell you my people. Let me tell my Oma and my papi there. In 2003, the people went and wrote book, they wrote paper. You're listening. You know? The law maker then, they went and wrote paper. My friend come and read it in the in the uh, BB people on a book, and I will tell you in simple in the way it means what in the put in that thing. The thing what Prince John, when you hear Prince Johnson saying, I must stay, I must stay, that BB people were going to be using. I come and, come and tell you what in you mean. Well, I beg you, let's read that, that particular provision, please. The Amnesty lawyer that is terrible. I beg you, if you have a moment, let's read it for to one more. If Melbourne's still on the radio, right? Because yeah, I don't know when we're going to the news break. Uh, we yeah, we're have... still there. If... We're still there. We're still there. Yeah, you want to give us a signal as to the time limit or how long you're going to be because we want to go through this stuff and it's very important. Very, very. Monk, let's start, I beg you, before we leave the radio. I know they will leave the radio to the okay. news. This is what it says, right? It, 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 it was from Page Africa that came up with this article back then, one Leonard Dogdo. It was on the 25th of May in 2021 that the article, the amnesty, no one is talking about because it was a draft bill, but this bill was kept in hiding. The public yeah. was never aware of it. They used that comprehensive Accra peace agreement to slide this particular legislation and tie them together that in the future, if anybody wants to come out, these same criminals and lawmakers that went to that peace store because they used the peace store to put their particular amnesty. The amnesty was their own secret bill that they wrote. Nobody gave the amnesty. And you will be, look, like, you don't know. You'll be coming to SKTV. I will learn a lot. 
Let me read this article, Steve. <laughs> and you were breaking up because you probably got a skill to pull it in. You can read it and pull it in simple English for me. I ain't got all the skill. What do you want? What do you put in the chat room? You do your hand like that. It mean, it mean, it mean, we warm it up. Just put it in the chat room. Don't get cold for a whole group, I beg you. So you want me to go through it or we're going to the, to, the, to the break? I mean, we're going for a break right now? I mean, speak to us. Like go back. Talk. We want you just shaking your head, brother. I don't understand you. You what happened? <laughs> then we let that conversation because you want me to go like that. You confused today. Mama Toba, we can't hear you. <laughs> what never on the story again? Everyone gave me sound though, and that thing we never give from Don Steve or the whole sound language thing. I'm not I'm not yeah, mama, ready, in the, ready in the ready in the chat. Yeah, yeah put it in the chat. chat. <laughs> <laughs> we just got it on the You want on the too? <laughs> <laughs> they make more men. I don't want to make this. You may want to be digging on you while you're No, we'll, we'll continue. They're talking different things. We'll get to the MSA. Yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne is on the radio. He'll be right back with us. So, yeah. uh, Monk, we're not reading right now, but, but Monk, yeah, we're holding. Reading, reading it, what is your take, though? What is your, what is your, we're, 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 we're on news bulletin, right? Yeah. But Monk, before we get to the MSA, just reading that, what was your take? Because I was, when I, when I came across it, I was, I said, these guys duped us. Yes. Who played us long time ago? Man, take what they take the people for granted in Liberia. The same thing you see happening in the governance process in Liberia. These guys will do things deliberately and expect that the vast majority of people in Liberia are either ill informed or they are get plain stupid to not know what's happening. It's the same thing you see from our lawmakers on a daily basis in Liberia. They they knew what was going to happen to the future. So technically, they were projecting and they were trying to insulate themselves from any means of prosecution that lawmakers or so-called warlocks that inflicted huge pain and damage on Liberian people were able to write an act to protect them going into the future. Can you imagine that? That they were going to write this particular law or an act in places somewhere that just in case when you bring war crime, they can what? They can activate it. That's exactly what it did years back. So think about dating back to 2003. It's been more than a generation now because in 2024, 21 years in the making. They just get it at the insurance policy. Look, I was shocked when I read that article. I never came across it. Not a single day in my life. I mean, I've been following whether the, 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 the Rome statue, the Geneva Convention, and all the international war crimes, tribunal set up all over the world. I mean, you even sending something last night to pick up from the Sierra Leonean uh, war crime prosecution in Sierra Leonean. The process, the methodology is everything that they used to establish the code. But I was shocked when you sent me that article. I don't know how you came across it or whether you came across it randomly or you had it stolen or hard drive or in your email. I don't know because it's been since 2021. And so when I heard Prince Johnson and other people talking about amnesty, they had a called Tomo here name talking about i mean almost like it was a threat to joseph walker because that's exactly what he was saying and the abortion of the wall like, okay so the same players were the one that came up with this secret act and you know, look, look at it look at the reason they gave for coming up with this act can you imagine so they were trying to justify their action and i tell people there is what? a difference between fighting a war and war crimes you can fight what? a war just because you fought a war that's not equal to a war crime they are specific what? action Mongo, yeah, you want to say something? Monk, I, I want to, I want to, I want to read something that is very interesting because I want to put it in context to our viewers. We'll read it again before or right after we read the Geneva stuff, and it's in the Constitution. Do you know the capital for Article ninety-seven of our Constitution to bring this about? But before ninety-seven, in Article ninety-five. When you read A, let me read it quickly. It states here in Article 95, the Constitution of the Republic of Liberia, which came in force into force on the 26th day of July 1847, and which was suspended 
on the 12th day of April, 1980, is hereby abrogated, notwithstanding this abrogation, however, any enactment or rule of law existing immediately before the coming into force of this constitution, whether derived from the abrogated constitution or from any other source, shall, in so in so far as it is not inconsistent with any provision of this constitution, continue in force as if enacted, issued, or may be under the authority of this constitution. This is the interesting part. B, all treaties, you're listening to all treaties, executive and other international agreements and obligations concluded by the government, concluded by the government or the People Redemption Council or prior governments in the name of the Republic prior to the coming into force of this constitution shall continue to be valid and binding on the Republic unless unless aggregated or canceled or unless otherwise inconsistent with this constitution. So, so basically in this part, um, let me come to the domestic debt and other things because I want to, I want to clarify that. I want to stop there. Um, C, all foreign and domestic debts or other loans or, or obligation contracted by the government of the People Redemption Council or prior governments or any agency or other authority in the name of the Republic of Liberia prior to the coming of the existence of the Constitution shall continue to be binding on the, on the enforceable by the Republic of Liberia. So basically, Monk, the reason I wanted to read that part is for us to ensure that we capture that anything, any law, anything signed by the Constitution by the Liberian government. That why you use that why you saw Alan why use the word the executive yesterday. Anything signed by Joseph Yuma Boaka is binding. Any international agreement is binding. Yes. It is binding. That means we must adhere to it. We must, but but, but look at what they did in Article 97. Those boys, and this is what they use. This is what Prince Johnson and look at and say, Oh, those men and got away. We need to get away to. Look at what Doden did. In Article 97, no executive, legislature, judiciary, or administrative action taken by the People's Redemption Council or by any person, whether military or civilian, in the name of the council, pursuant to any of the degrees, shall be questioned in any proceeding whatsoever, and calling it, it shall not be lawful for any court, let's you know, for any court or other tribunal to make any other or grant any remedy or relief in respect to any such act. No court be, no court or other tribunal shall entertain any action whatsoever instituted against the government of Liberia, whether before or after the coming into manner whatsoever in bringing about a change of government on April 12th of 1980 in respect of any act or commission relating to the consequences upon. So they name the consequences. They name the consequences here in B. The overthrow of the government in power in Liberia before the establishment of the government of the Redemption Council, the supervision of the Constitution of Liberia, July 26, 19, 1847, the establishment, functioning, and other organs established by the People's Redemption Council, the the imposition of any penalties, including death penalties, or the confiscation of any property by other under the authority of the People Redemption Council, under the decree made by the people in pursuant, but not limited to the measures undertaken by the council to punish person guilt, persons guilty of crimes and malpractices to de determine determination of the Liberian nation, the people and the economy of of the public interest and the establishment of this constitution. So basically, Monk, what these guys are saying is they set themselves free. Though they everything they did, they say nobody could, could go after them for it. So that means Doe killing, that means Prince Johnson killing Doe. Yeah. Prince Johnson was constitutionally wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> for killing Doe. 
they said so, this <laughs> even if you if you if the, the article you send when you read the whole document it was oh, one of the many reasons that they believe that it should be insulated from prosecution because they were saying that the action taken by doe that's what justified the war but you know when we get back on the radio we'll read it and people will get to understand exactly what's happening so that so that mean that mean what you what we're saying print johnson yes. in himself violated the constitution by even going after doe yes but he still believe he exonerated by, oh, by, now you believe that? You read the Constitution. <laughs> they seen nothing in the Constitution. Yeah. When Prince Johnson killed those 1990, Prince Johnson violated the Labrador Constitution. <laughs> oh, but I want the Constitution say that I'll say it. Yeah. It read that so, in Article 97. The 1986 Constitution, I, I, I see it like a military code instead of a Constitution because I didn't do it, just protecting himself. Do was setting himself up for, 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 a longer period of time because yes. he was probably like threatening his political opposition, forcing them into exile, and putting in place laws that would have kept him in the presidency to perpetual. I mean, I don't know for the longest. That's so exactly what. For, he for was those doing. of you who backing Prince Johnson for killing Doe, Doe, the Constitution of Liberia. Everything you can reach out the Constitution. Or so tell the Constitution say, and the Constitution is the death. The Constitution is the that. Well, you haven't been reading the Constitution too well. Maybe you need to go read it. It's written that black and white. Though shouldn't have been killed by Prince Johnson. That's what the Constitution says. So do so Prince Johnson violated the Labrador Constitution. Yo, yeah, yo. you go tell the, the men of God. He don't respect the law of the land. He killed a certain president, he violated the Constitution. It's wrong. He broke the Labrador Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they ain't reading constitution now. Eh? Yeah. Oh, I see you. All of y'all backing away from it now. Yes, it's sad. All of y'all backing away. You know, mom. Yeah, and another thing I want to bring to your attention concerning the whole stuff about John Molu, that stuff that he wrote concerning this uh the asset recovery team. I woke up the morning seeing a lot of posts saying that John Molu in fact stated that he wasn't the one that wrote that piece. So I was like, but John Malou understand how the PR work, especially in the day and age. He got to come up with an official statement. Just you saying that, oh, it wasn't John Malou that wrote it. How can we authenticate whether the person saying that is even John Malou? If you're going to say that he's not the one that wrote the original content of that particular piece that was circulating on social media, then how can we tell? So he need to write something. I mean, he got Rodney C. A. Number. He can he can write a piece and send it there, debunking exactly why it's circulating in the news and on social media. I mean. To exonerate himself because we're not going to take some oral statement or somebody's trying to say, Oh, they're speaking on behalf of John Malou. It just doesn't make sense to me, I think. So, I agree with you 100%. John Malou knows the protocol, he knows what to do. He's been in governance, he understands how to officially make a statement to clarify any allegation, whatever it is. He knows how to go about it. So, all that extra thing, the fact that he doesn't want to come and officially clear a name off it, maybe he got attachment to it. That way, only I don't worry about John Malou, man. I told you from day one, anybody who knows. As a professional, you know what is right to do, especially to benefit our people. And you sit there and support people who you know will not do what is right. And you come by, you want to play savior, carry that savior somewhere else. You're not serious. You are not, I don't take you any serious, any time, any day. You're not serious. I could care less about John Malou. The only way I would care about John Malou, unless John Malou comes up and continue to do what is right. Up until then, let him keep it moving. John Malou won't job. Let him go get job. You think John Molina know what's up? John Molina knew Joseph Baga was not up to the stacks. John Molina knew it. You have fixed your signature to corrupt things, corrupt people, people who will come and do wrong. The same thing you quote unquote were criticizing, and you expect me to say what thing. So John Molina, then other than let it recycle in business, other than let it be in this reap my rogue. So let it be inside. I don't worry about John Molina. John Molina not important. If John Molina were important, he was going to support people who want to do what is right. John Molina knew Joseph Baga don't have an ounce. An ounce in him to do what is right. John Malou knows that. He knows that. He knows that Joseph Boga likes to play games. He knows that. He worked, he worked with Joseph Boga for 12 years. You know what I mean? For you to come and sit down and be playing games, you professional man, he's be checking. You don't know what is right for you. You think what they make it some professional people open the distance and self certain people? Because they know it's about professionalism and ethics. So John Malou and the other people who won't play moral thing or whatever, let them leave Joseph Boga alone. They're not moralists. If you support people openly who are not moral, whatever, they don't go somewhere. John Molu is not a moral person. John Molu is not a serial man. Let him keep it moving. Everybody happy. We're happy with what the president doing. They're not appointing you a sweet for you. 
keep it moving. You thought I was going to appoint you. We're not appointing you in our government. Go do what you want. You let it get red. You were red tire. You were red tire. You're ready. You're red tire. You're not ready. You're red tire. We're not even reading what you're reading, sir. We're not reading. What are you rolling with? Are we rolling with our kid? Let's Steve, have you got any, any, any feedback from the whole uh, central bank issue concerning this morning? Okay, uh, I think this was back then. Uh, we are working on it. We are working on it. We are working on it, Monk. Um, you know, but let's let, let get, let, let get Milbon back. Go, go, get to this. Yeah, Milbon is back. Uh, go straight to the MSD. Uh, Milbon, why are you are going? Milbon, if you're biting your back. No, but so while you are going, let's bring the lab report to, to, to back to, to, to speed here really quick. If you read, if you read Article 95 of the Constitution of Liberia, the first thing it tells you is all the treaties that we sound internationally. If any law may God tell you enough binding that not true, it's a lie to you. Any president, anybody in government tell you still binding a lie. The constitution say. All the treaties, all the laws that we sign internationally, even when we owe people domestic and international debt, we are bound to it. The liberal responsibility, we must honor it. So that means the room statue, the Geneva Convention, we are honor it and we are bound to it. It's not a constitutional issue, no constitutional crisis there. Don't let nobody fool you. Another thing we write in Article 97 of the Labrador Constitution, Prince Johnson violated the Constitution of Labrador by killing Doe. Because the constitution say nobody should go after door and anybody from the PRC government. So what Prince Johnson did, Prince Johnson is in violation of the constitution. So that other revving, that revving there, he now did the right thing. Not only that he's seen against God, he's seen against the constitution. But let's get to the whole amnesty thing because that's where we left you. Let's get to the amnesty issue. Mom, what you say about the amnesty issue? Because that's what we need to get to quick. So quickly, uh, uh, uh. Uh, Steve, before more go, you know you are the simple English man, and our folks, our old folks are following you. So yeah. when you use those kind of big words, and you not find the way to make it clear to them, okay, they will be a little bit confused. That too, that too. My people, when when Prince Johnson say amnesty, it means they forgave him. They set him free. That means the killing or do what he is what he, he now follow the constitution. He go free with it. That means we might do nothing to him. We can't do fun to him. Now, what MSD mean? So, Mong, let's get into that, that MSD thing. What Clinton was talking about? Setting you free and LeBron Paul can do fun. The law can hold you for it. Let's get into it. Yeah, big thing. So, you want me to read that, that, that piece, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is what it says. It was written in 2021. It said the establishment of the war crimes causing LeBron for the prosecution of the likes of Prince Johnson and his cohort might be illegal if the heading out of legislature enacted in 2003 that granted amnesty to all present associated with LeBron civil war beginning 1989 to August of 2003 is brought to the full. The, cop, a, the copy, they say the act, a copy of which from the Africa have seen is titled An Act to Grant to grant immunity from both civil and criminal prosecution against all persons within the jurisdiction of Liberia from acts of crime committed during the civil war. Can you imagine that? An act to grant immunity both civil and criminal for all persons within the jurisdiction of Liberia. Can you imagine, too? It said this ad was published on August 8th of 2003. Front page Africa has not been able to fully ascertain why this ad continued to remain in the shadows. However, a prominent member of the previous regime confided in front page Africa that there were external forces that helped to sweep it under the carpet in order to satisfy the quest for the establishment of the war in economic plan code. It was, however, not replaced, it was not repealed before the establishment of the Truman Reconciliation Commission that called for the establishment of such code. It said this is among several reasons why some commissioner or commissioners, including Pearl Brown Booth, dissented the recommendation and final report of the TRC. The act reads, they said, whereas the fundamental right and dignity of the people of the Republic of Liberia were curtailed and hijacked by the regime of 1980 coup d'etat and that of the 20th president of the Republic of Liberia, they are talking about Samuel Kanyando in, in here now. They say, whereas during this regime, tribalism and sec sectionalism were the highest peak, which culminated into tribal killing, mayhem, and destruction. So they said, because of Samuel Doe, what they are technically saying, because of Samuel Doe action, that's why they are 
killing and sectionalism is kind of a justify so they cannot be trialed by any international court because they were doing it morally they had a moral obligation to do it so they say <laughs> man it's a way as a result the art commission again peaceful and law abiding citizens of Liberia from diverse background Liberians being afraid of losing their life exile themselves while other reluctantly staying like to be to be a uh, man by those uh pre i mean repressive regime and whereas a group of exile patriots in liberia honor their moral and divine obligations to liberate liberia the liberians from the yoke of terrorism tribalism and ultimately death on the banner of the national patriot from the liberia and launch a popular civil uprising of more than 80 percent of liberians in liberia are exhibited by the granting of legitimate constitutional and democratic state power to the political one of the MPP. So in order was it, and uh, you were taking it up, but let me just read it. I think you would break it down or whatsoever. Then they say, whereas before the special election of 1997, all former warring factions, NPF, or the AF, or your Labour K, your Labour J, the LPC, the Lofa Defense Force, were engaged in a seven-year-old war in, whereas the special election of 1997 was subsequent inauguration of August 2nd, 97 marked the end of a seven-year war which brought into being the government of inclusion with all former warring factions and political parties on board and whereas some former contestant of the 96 special election a member of the warring faction left the government and exiled in seven neighboring country and where are these individual group into separate warring faction named the labor united for reconciliation and democracy alert and the movement for democracy in Liberia model and launched a fracture call ethnic and religious war against the MPP led government and the peace loving people of Liberia from August 1999 up to the present 2003. And whereas these events have led to another civil war in which up to, I mean, which has wrought all Liberian kill some, toss, bring back tribal and religious hatred. And whereas there is a need for total reconciliation among Liberians from all ethnic, cultural, and religious background within and out of Liberia. Now, therefore, it is enacted by the Senate. And a House of Representatives of the Liberian Legislature assembled Section One from the immediate from from I mean that from immediately after the passage of this act, immediately is hereby granted by both civil from both civil and criminal proceeding against present official of government representative world warring faction combatant in the jurisdiction of the public library from all acts or crime committed by them during the 13 years and the eight months of civil war from December 1989 to 2003. Section 2. This act shall take effect immediately upon publication in the handbill. Any law to the contrary now will stand. Okay. <laughs> stop. Stop. Let me ask you. Stop. Stop. Let me ask you this question before I press yeah. it. Does that mean that this particular bill will pass in the particular law will pass into the handbill? Well, I don't know whether the handbill part, but it was no. no, because if this law were passed in the handbill, it shouldn't have been heading. Yeah. This so you see what it did. They shot themselves in the leg without realizing it. They shot themselves. They created a law, kept yeah. it on the cover, kept it behind closed door on the carpet, like it says here in this particular reading. But then they accept they expect it to be in effect. But here yeah. they are only manning themselves by saying yeah. well, it, should be, it should be it should be in a hand bill friend. They wrote it, it and it 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 never it. It. Yes. <laughs> you see how the criminal then decided that they will hurt themselves with unknowing. Yeah. They created a law that they decided to hack. They will not put it in him so that LeBron can see it and know about it. Yeah. But then they say the law is there and the law and the law is in effect. No, it's not in effect. It is that what I'm saying. You're more of a dead man switch or insurance policy that were put in place for them. <laughs> but, 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 but Monk, yes. when the Pearl Brown Brew issue that you read, let me say this Pearl Brown Brew contradicted herself. You can sit as part of the commissioner from the beginning to the end. But at the end, they say you gave a dissent. Why didn't you raise up this concern from the beginning? Why didn't you stop and withdraw yourself from it and be on record and say, no, I'm not going to go through this process. The fact that you agreed to go through the entire process at the very end and you say you gave a dissent, that's hypocritical. That is hypocritical. So Prabhupada will honor my herself. She honor my TRSC work. She honor my herself. But we are working with Massa Washington and other people who will come on here for to have this conversation about this particular TRC particular TRC document? Because they honor man themselves. Per Brown Boo honor man herself. She ain't honor man anybody. She knew exactly what's going on. She knew the game that was being played because they play themselves always. But 
That makes more. Tell, really. <laughs> more. That I, mean, more. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. We're almost done with it. It's almost done with. It. Yeah, let me continue because there was another part. There's another part of follow up the program when how is coincided with the Accra Peace Accord because exactly. I have no idea. Okay, so they say they, they say they say flaws. Where it says here, they say I'm not saying all the country. I'm no, not, not here. After reading the act, let me see what I'm not. I'm not saying you are to I'm say, you are, you are to all say other countries. Okay, they say the act granting. The, the act granting amnesty to all member warring factions in the 2003 out of the legislature is not unique to Liberia. And look at the kind of example they gave. These guys, I don't know. My grandma says she can get my level. People who are dumb try to play smart. They cited laws that were dated back to the 1800s when there were no international organization for him or whatever. So look at the kind of example they gave. They said, <laughs> they, said they are granting amnesty to all members of the warring action faction in Liberia's act at the legislature is not unique to Liberia. Some famous amnesties included General Amnesty granted by President of the United States of America, Andrew Jackson, after the American Civil War from 1861, April 9, 1865. The French Amnesty of 1905, the Persian Amnesty. Can you imagine when Iran was called Persian as an empire back then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Amnesty, August 10, 1840. Napoleon. Can you imagine Napoleon pulling power in the French Revolution? Those are the people that were referenced that got amnesty. <laughs> Napoleon's amnesty of my 13th, 1815, from which 13 eminent presidents, including the Taliban, were exempted. So Prince Justin is quoting law from 150 years to 200 years ago. Yeah. So they said the flaws within the TRC report. They said in several interview council of Prayer Brown Blue, who refused to affix a signature to the final document of the TRC, but rather dissented stated that the final report as consolidated was not in consonance with the 86 constitution of Liberia that had established the TRC and the TRC rules and procedure revised April 27, 2007, the August 2003 out of legislature granting several amnesty among order. She stated that she could not concur with the with a fellow commission of the TRC that prosecution in the court of competent jurisdictions and other form of public sanction will foster general reconciliation. You see, that's a contradiction one read there. You don't want to sign it in the middle of winning certain constitutional requirement. Another minute saying, oh, it will bring about impunity and justice. And it's not going to, I mean, like, come on. The, our people, man, she said, we'll foster, she said, let me go back. She said that she cannot concur with the following commissioner, with her fellow commissioner, the TRC, that prosecution in the court of competent jurisdiction, all of form of public sanction will foster genuine reconciliation, come back in to promote justice, peace, and security. Consular Boo, in her dissent, referenced the Ghana 2003 CPA agreement in Article 35, stated the LTGL, which is a National Transitional Government Library, shall give consideration to a recommendation for several, for general understanding to all persons. Can you imagine? <laughs> To all present and parties engaged or involved in military activity during the Liberian civil conflict that is subject of this government. In her stated view, the amnesty clause in the CPA, which is the Accra Peace Accord, the Ghana Peace Accord Agreement, is clear indication the CPA opted for the TRC as an alternative to war crime tribunal to document and acknowledge a legacy of conflict of human rights violation facilitating genuine healing in the spirit of national reconciliation for Liberia. Councilor Bufalo expressed that contrary to the final recommendation of the TRC, the vast majority of Liberia opted to forgive and forget about the past. Can you imagine that? So so, so, what, so this part is very important because mm -hmm. what Councilor what Bufalo is saying here, Prayer Brown Boo, or whatever her name is, what she is saying here is she don't care about the Liberian people who are hurt. She don't care if they refuse to forgive the people want accountability and justice. It should be accountability and justice. That the only way you are going to sign on this. Wow. And that woman, that I mean, we just we just celebrated World International Women Day, and everything should be surrounding women and how mothers, women suffer for their children for nine months. Sometimes we, the men, we abandon them in this, in that effort. Sometimes we don't even care. Sometimes we leave them for another woman or for another home or for another family and they suffer. Young people were murdered. Pregnant women were killed. They were hurt. But another woman said they should not give them justice. Refuse to sign for them to give them justice. 
Wow. Fred Brown Boo is on record that because the TRC recommended based on what the Liberian people wanted, justice and accountability, she said she would not sign it. That was her reason why she never signed the TRC. Because she wanted for her to carry on in the Palawan Hall to go talk it. And that's it. And Prayer Brown Boo is still walking in Labura free. Yeah. That woman and that man took this decision. I just wanted to stop to this part and let her know how sometimes when we say women can honor my, some women can honor my the interest of women, how this applies. But I also know of some good women who stood their grounds, who will stand their grounds for their children. They will even leave a man because of their children. I'm a witness of that. I know that because I have a mother who did that, who stood her ground. I also have a mother who, I have an auntie who did that, who stood her ground to make sure I'm in America today. I had a grandma who also stood her ground. There are some good women, but they're just in the minority. And this is why sometimes some of our guests get a little disturbed when we see Yomli Kanga Lawrence, who is in authority, silence on the issue of justice and accountability as the leader of the Senate, that woman. But they got a children in America enjoying going to school here in universities and colleges. They don't got his son here. He, most of them got their children in America. Just so you know. They got their families here. They got homes here. Some of them even got statuses here in this country. That women. That another woman refused to sign this. There are few women. People like Massa Washington, other people who have stood up over the years. There are some decent women who are fighting daily when you speak to some of them behind closed doors they say in as much that we have gotten old when i get tired yeah cindy there are a couple of women you know some of you i'm not naming you that are standing that they're on a quest and just say not on a family line and not on friend and not on partisan it's on seriousness they are vested and interested in seeing what is right but monk, let, monk let's go to so we'll finish reading there that thing what it brought to the labyrinth people and post on the labyrinth people. Let's, let's, what does the room statue say? Just the preamble. What does it say? I don't know if you have it available. Just the preamble. The, the room statue is very deep. I'm just going to give the highlight of the, because it's a very, very deep and comprehensive document. I'm only going to do the purpose, maybe. In some yeah, do you have the preamble? Do you have the preamble available? I have it here. Yeah, can you please read that preamble? Because I all worry about it. Then we'll go to the Geneva and do the same thing so we can reconcile that with what we've just read. Mm -hmm. From these people, your law makers may law they had a seen law, but they say the only way that law will be in effect unless they print it in hand bills. You want me to go ahead? Don't do that in hand bill. <laughs> oh Lord, what kind of country we got? What kind of people we got? And when you say the truth, you become enemy. You want me to go? Yeah, please go ahead. Well, I'm just going to read a preamble, and but the preamble is more of like a subsections, and it talks about reaffirmation, resolving, conscience, mindfulness, recognizing that such crime threaten the peace and security and well-being of the world, that most serious crime concerns the international community as a whole must not go unpunished. So the room statute here is telling you that, you know what, there are international laws that you cannot violate it above your constitution, it above your national law. There is a global order, there is a global statues that affects everybody and when you put your signature to that particular agreement in your oh, oh, Mongo, Mongo, yeah. I think it will do I think it will do a, well if we go to the Geneva Convention before coming to the room statue I think that will help us I don't know what you think well I don't know if either way you so, can go so, so 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 here, here's the Geneva Convention a series it states here I don't know you got it with you if you have it, then you can read it. Let me put it in simple English. Quick, 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 quick. Because we got to go to the line to hear from the people back home. 
Mungu there? Okay, let me let me see if I can. I got it right here. Can you hear me? Yeah, you got it. Oh, uh, I got a room started, not a Geneva Convention. Uh. Okay, let me let me do the Geneva Convention quick. You do the room start. You quick, 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 because we, we and then we get a reaction based on what they've written. The Geneva Convention. This is what it states: a series of international treaties. You remember we read in the Constitution earlier in '95 that any treaty is signed by the foreign government. Yeah, so that means this automatically brings in all of them statute them. Amnesty, whatever it is, a series of international treaties concluded in Geneva between 1864 and 1949 for the purpose of alien written the effect of war on soldiers and victims. Two additional protocols to the 1947 agreement were approved in 1977. You're listening, oh, this was before our civil war, 1977. The development of the Geneva Convention was, was closely associated with Red Cross, who, whose founder, Heron Donant, initiated international negotiations that proceed to the convention for amelioration of the wounded in time of war in 1864, the convention provided for number one, let us know immunity for the capture and destruction of all establishment for treatment of wounded and sick soldiers and their personnel, the impartial reception and treatment of all combatants, the protection of surveillance providing aid to the wounded, and the and the recognition of record symbol as a means of identifying persons and equipment covered by the agreement. The 1864 convention was ratified within three years by the, majority, by the major European powers, as well as by many other states. It was amended and extended by the second Geneva convention in 1906. And it is, it is, and its provisions were applied to the maritime warfare through the Hague Convention of 1889 and 1907. The third Geneva Convention, the, the convention relating to the treatment of prisoner of war, 1929, required that belligerent treatment, belligerent treat pr prisoners of war, humiliate furnish information about them and permit officials visit to prison camps by the representative of um, the state. So more basically, Prince Johnson didn't do all of this though. When he captured though. So no, so, I mean, uh, Steve, let's not make things complicated for our people with all this information, you know? We cover the most basic part of it. We will be hearing from them pretty soon on the radio in Liberia. But let me tell you something, right? What happened looking at the timeline? If you can recall, the transitional government had the very same warlords that participated that were all part of the transitional government, right? Yes. They were all, whether the Tomoya, Nimne, the Prince Johnson, they were all part of that whole administration whatsoever. What those guys did, they came up with this secret act to protect themselves from future accountability when it comes to work and economic crimes because they knew what was going to happen in the future. So they crafted this bill and kept it and used it as a bargaining chip at the Accra Peace Accord as a condition for signing on for peace. That's the main idea. And that's the reason you see your guy like Pioneer always mentioning the Accra Comprehensive Peace Accord and Amnesty because they knew exactly what they were doing. That's why they took that whole idea and took it to the court, and not the court, but the, the Accra Peace Agreement. And like I said, they use it as a bargaining chip for peace to come to Liberia. So they built on, it covers Liberia, but guess what? They put it together with a conference also that was about peace. So now they believe that because of the Accra Agreement and the bill that they had, the secret or hidden bill that they have, that they can use it now, to thwart international laws, and that will never ever happen because international law trumps our domestic law. That's the so, whole idea of today's conversation. Most that definitely, I get away. 
So let, let, let's just go to the radio and take our let, let you hear from the folks back there to know what's going on. Yes, international laws, you put it right. Trump, whatever treaty, whatever, because your own constitution says we are bound by international law in Article 95. Go read it. Your own const, our own constitution in Liberia say we are Baba. We must. It's binding and we're bound by international law. So you can't say you have a different constitution that erases all the international laws. No, you can't say that because it's binding. But uh, uh, Melbourne, if possible, can we take a few calls? Uh, I think we can only do it on our side because our line here, yeah, the system is still working on and uh, maybe you may not get us. Uh, oh. So, yeah, maybe hopefully before Friday, everything will be set up. Okay, before Friday, hopefully everything will yeah, be set up. Let the call right. from this side. How are people call? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I know Seku has the, the line with him. He, has, he hasn't been, it, wasn't, it was routed to me initially, but uh, he got routed back to him. So if you have my number, I'll let Mon put the number on here. That one among that among the way. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Because you know what? Even the course already start coming back to back, but you won't hear us. So let me see. As to what I'm maybe you're gonna get us. Hello? Yeah, for the same means Yeah, my brother, go ahead. Your name and from where you join us. All right, thank you so much. We will continue to discuss them until the, the free seats here. So let's call out. Hello? Yeah, Chief, go ahead quickly. Your name from where, John? Go ahead, boss. All right. Thank you so much also for being part of the show to this call. Good evening. Well, how are you, man? Uh, I'm not purchasing and uh, enjoying the form of your job for Good. So, Go ahead, Chief. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that we're going to bring about all the time. Trust me. The Lord said, if you're not too proper, you're not doing it at all. I'm not going to say anything. If you're doing it, you're not going to say anything. The Lord said, you're not going to say anything. You're not going to say anything. Yeah. yeah, we can't we can't we can't get that clear. It's too static. So I think All right. follow up. And then those of you who are in the US who want to participate mm. in the conversation, uh, maybe you can uh and, and Mon, I think I heard one of the I did pick up something from one of the callers who said it earlier, but it's important to re-emphasize on that 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 
the constitution was silent when they signed this particular bill down or this particular law maybe that's uh maybe that's why they did not it did not come into him bill whatever it is because but it, how can it be a law that is used now <laughs> you know because the the that, i mean that was that was at the, at the end of the day that was interim government so the constitution was silent on some of these things. yeah it was an interim government where those guys did they wrote their own version of an amnesty and thinking that they could apply it to international laws like i said look at the timeline of the time the bill was written and that of the accra peace accord the ghana comprehensive peace agreement it was the same time so they went to that particular agreement with the expectation that you know what we can use this as a bargaining chip in an order because that oil was all about dividing government job forming an interim government laying down and so those were all preconditions but guess what the very signatory to the document were all former warlord. You listen to what Abba Chia said when he referenced the whole TRC thing that we should set up a trust account, put money in it, and pay victims. They were referring to that same TRC recommendation that came from Accra. That's why every time Prince Johnson speak, he mentioned amnesty in Ghana. You think that's by coincidence? No. They plan on doing that in exactly what they did. They wrote their own version of a law to protect themselves, like I said. An insurance policy and tell the librarian people and tell the librarian people that you know what we got amnesty. But can it can, 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 can this amnesty even hold knowing that it's not it was not even in the handbook? Amnesty, amnesty the play where I know you know, like I said, my grandma used to say she hate to see stupid people acting smart. Why they fail to realize the amnesty and they had a call it the whole uh human rights stuff, the uh Rome statue. It was brought to the UN for discussion in two, I mean, 1998. But guess when it became law? 2003. So it was a year, it was a year after the Accra Peace Accord. That means that that particular amnesty that Prince Johnson wrote in his dream with his colleague, it cannot hold and it would never hold because it's not in alignment with international law. The time frame just doesn't match and it was an interim government. I don't know. It would be way more than that, but I don't think it's going to hold. From my little man understanding, I don't think. Is going to be anything closer, remotely close to what they want, because they were the same warlord. They anticipated that this day was coming, and that particular bill or resolution or whatsoever were written to give themselves a protection. And then they came and lied to the librarian people that they were giving amnesty. I have to say they were recognized internationally, which was a lie. It never happened that way. Hmm. Oh wow. So so hmm. this is very interesting. So this amnesty law or whatever they are talking, whatever. That has been quoted is really a cover up. It's not what you think it is. It's not applicable. If so, then let them show us where it is in the law. Because these things got to be put in a hand bill. And if they were done during an interim government, they, which in which the constitution was suspended, does that meet the threshold for it to be included into the new government or the constitution when the constitution were resumed? Does it go back into the constitution or is it applicable at that time? Because the constitution was also suspended, maybe that's why they never pull into a hand bill. That's what I'm telling you. They wrote their own version of the amnesty. I'm talking about the war mongers and killer and told our people that they were giving amnesty, which was a lie. If you follow the interview with Dr. White, it was the same reason I asked that identical question. Which provision in amnesty law that grant immunity to war law in Liberia that gave them a free pass. He said that's nothing like of such happened. So just because you went to the Accra Peace Agreement, just because you have your so-called bill that you wrote your insurance policy, does not mean that it was recognized internationally and there was no amnesty given to either one of them. It was a blatant lie and people have been so on this nonsense for the longest time possible. Nobody in Liberia was ever given amnesty by any international conference or international code, never ever in our history. But so, but, but, but monk, so that means the fact that it, the fact that the bill was not even printed, according to them, it uh, stayed there. The bill will only come to effect or it will only be impactful if it is printed into hand bill. The they fact that it wasn't <laughs> no, why they did what that's why they oh. called it or hit that is why they called it or heading bill. They knew the constitution was suspended, they knew it was a transitional government, so they wrote it and kept it in the vault. That the day you want to bring amnesty, then they can trigger it. You seen it? So it was, not, it was never in effect. It's not in existence. It's, it's <laughs> not in existence because it was never printed in the handbill. They themselves wrote that and said the only way it will come to effect unless it is printed in the handbill. 
But the still, fact that the separate of the handle means that it doesn't exist. We still saying the same thing in a different way. That is why the carry as a hidden bill. It was a mm -hmm. trigger. It was a trigger that was set in place. They know that it's not viable. It's not. A, it's not a law per se. It was mm -hmm. a transitional government. The politicians suspended. So this is what we talk about the criminal out of our people in Liberia in government. They lied to our people saying that they were all giving amnesty, which was a lie. Matter of fact, their own bill is not even legitimate for the fact that the constitution was suspended at the time it was a transitional government. They used the Accra cover up to make it to seem as if to say it was recognized by the international community. That's the lie. And it was a scam. That's why I keep asking Dr. White, are there any provision? Was there any law? Was there any court or jurisdiction, competent jurisdiction that gave warlocks immunity in Liberia? He said none, none whatsoever. What? Hold on one second. Let me. I have a caller here. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from, please? Hello. Yeah. What's your name? Where you calling from, please? Hey, this is the undercover sedition calling from somewhere in Minnesota. How are you? Yes, undercover sedition calling from somewhere in Minnesota. What's going on? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to 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 to, uh, to, to actually agree and understand where you guys are coming from. However, I I I want us all to be very careful because you know laws are usually that made for for particular group of people it is made so that it can serve as a deterrent so what those guys did for some kind of time to uh to this gun war they put those things in there to help themselves just just what you what you guys have said now the problem becomes if 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 we can hold certain part of the constitution and then do not hold all of parts of it, then we are going to have a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we can't say some part of the constitution are, are binding and other parts are not binding. So why is it so? There are so many ways we will get some of these guys that they let down, um, like the lies of uh, Prince Johnson. He's on one leg, so that part of it is what he wants to hold to hold on to. But he forgets that there is a the the, the deliberate you know, convention. He perceives all of these things that uh, that he is talking because what he actually did is war crime. Forget about Liberia. Forget about the things that you that you ask him to be forgiven about in Liberia. So if Liberia forgives you, let's just be. Let's just say, let's say, like, let's, okay, we don't want to go after Prince But the crimes that you committed are worldwide crimes. Right. You, you do not have that, uh, uh, that, you know, we come in the entire world. So, yes, so Prince Joseph, we, you, we can still come after you in so many ways. But, but I, I, I mean, that's the reason why the entire constitution needs to be trashed and throw in the trash bin. And how about you want? Because the people who who in fact made the thing is, I mean, we're a bunch of rebels, they're a bunch of criminals. We, I mean, our whole country is operating on something that was being put together. A bunch of bad people, they had emissary there. But emissary there, the people were standing over emissary their heads with, with, with guns. And they told them what to write. The thing is, the thing is a complete mess. Let's throw that thing away and write something new. I mean, if Kenya could do it, why can't we do it? Thank you. That's the so many. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, thank you, Benjamin. So, so Monk, Monk, I know we're we're about to leave the, the radio, but I, I'm still thinking about this thing making sense based on what we read from the Geneva Convention, based on what we read from the Rome Statute. In terms of these are war crimes that were committed. Forget about it being in Liberia. And there is no amount of constitutional law in Liberia. What the court of Liberia, you can be shielded and protected because of the constitutionality or whatever not. But from an international standpoint, is this still applicable? Because ben, made, ben made a good point. You, you, are, you are making that point indirectly. Is this still applicable from an international standpoint? Do you See, the very provision you read in Article 97 and 96, even if you want to ignore the international aspect of this amnesty law, they will still be guilty by virtue of the very same constitution. Yeah, we can make the case that Samuel Do and PRC men had gone on our people here to read the constitution that will go to favor them. But stay out of way, they still violate even the Labrador constitution that is at the local level. 
Now, talk about the international level. There are crimes that you commit that are universal when it comes to international crime, whether it's Geneva Convention, whether it's Rome Statute, or whatsoever tribunal that was set up anywhere in the world. That's why all the cases they reference to, to make the case that they needed to have impunity, they were they were quoting law from the 1800s. Why they never why they never quote a recent precedent or laws anywhere in the world that gave immunity to war criminals? They were talking about Napoleon Bonaparte and Andrew Jackson. How many American Americans know about Andrew Jackson? 1800s, because they know those things are not applicable in present time. And that's the game. The game plan was we were going to sell this scheme to the Liberian people and make it to look as if to say we have amnesty because we went to an Accra peace agreement. But in reality, that was a lie. It was a scheme. They never got one. Their insurance policy is not valid because it was a transitional government. The constitution was technically suspended at the time. So there is no way they can get away. And that's what Dr. White said on the show. Out of way, Prince Johnson and his henchmen can turn this thing around. They cannot get away with it because they won't have any legal basis or backing to protect them against I mean or facing the full consequence of the law. I just don't see it. Well quickly I gotta I gotta I gotta call her here. Let's get this call. Okay. Call her what's your name you call her from please. Yeah uh, hello Moses this, this is uh, Mr. Maolo. Yeah Mr. Maolo you see that constitution the nineteen eighty six constitution mm -hmm. Do you know who wrote those, those, uh, that constitution? Who? The Emma Sawyer and Edward Kesley, they headed the commission to write those things. And the foolishness that you see in there, it was done by them and these so-called progressives that you younger guys seem to hold in such high esteem. These guys are nothing but frauds and crooks, and that's all they have done to this country over and over again. And let me tell you one familiar phrase that they use to get both of them to sign on to that ugly constitution. Uh, Kekura Koto promised each one of them at different times that Doe was going to make them vice president and the Super Bowl was not going to stay law. He was just going to move from there and they were going to become president. And that's why they signed up to that thing. They, they wrote it the first time. They want to rectify it. He told the other one the same thing. And when, after everything, then he, Kekura Koto, got money back from way here in the U.S. and carried into Liberia and do make him vice president. So if you hear that familiar sound, oh, you were not still on, you will move from there. That's not the first time it happened in Liberia. So all of that nonsense that you guys complain about, it was written by the Emma Sawyer, the Dr. Kesley, yeah, in fact, over there are doctors there, Dr. this, Dr. that, hmm. and their cohort. So you're, you go read who wrote the, who, who, who did the, the 1986 constitution, who rectified it. The both of them, these guys, these guys have done nothing but hurt that country. These so-called progressives have done nothing but hurt that country bunch of emotionally competent people who destroyed that country and until today there is no grasp nowhere okay. where the, the the Liberian government the, the uh, Liberia has gone in the north position since that coup happened in 1980. They want to say that they did something so much. Thank, no grasp. Thank you, Mr. Mahalo. Economic or otherwise. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Mahalo. Well, Folks, we are, um, keep your calls ca coming. The calls are rather to me. Uh, Mo, we're about to leave the radio here. What say you in a minute or a few seconds? What say you about what say you about um, about uh, the president um, signature on um, on the two documents that that the White spoke about yesterday? What do you say to the president? For me, I don't have that much to say. I just want to get the feedback from the callers. And we, we, you, you said this thing before, I think a couple of days ago, that Joseph Burger is given another opportunity to do something different in Liberia because this thing has been happening for a very, very long time. He will never get an opportunity like this, especially with an overwhelming consensus from the Liberian people across the length and breadth of Liberia. We will be looking up to Joseph Burger because Dr. White said it explicitly this time around. You have the pressure coming from the executive branch. And the moment the president put pen to paper on this issue, 
with an executive order. This thing is a is a foregone conclusion. It is a done deal. So whether it's a room convention, whether Prince Johnson and the folks can lie to our people that they were giving amnesty, which never happened, whether they wrote a bill that is not even bounding, that they kept in the vault for more than a generation, we could care less. The moment Joseph Braca signed up onto that document, is game on, and we'll be looking up to him to sign that document. That's all I can say for now. We'll be looking up to him to sign those documents. Um, you know, like I said yesterday, and that's that's the only thing I really have to say to President Jose Yuma Boakai. President Yuma, President Jose Yuma Boakai has the perfect opportunity to make history. President Jose Yuma Boakai has it. Perfect, perfect opportunity. A golden opportunity that was presented to President George Weah. You know, President George Weah wouldn't have had the print Johnson noise from the McCarthy and other people uh, that contributed to him losing this past election. Had he taken that step, and that different thing we're talking about, where he was more in trying to protect Prince Johnson and other people at the time than doing what is right to save the future, make history, you know, that that would have been not only have added to his legacy, lifelong legacy, you know. So he missed the opportunity. President Joseph Yuman Braga has that opportunity to muster the courage. Steve, to do right. Steve. Why do you think there is a coordination about the rejection of the World Economic Crown Code coming from Albert Che and Tomo Yaya Nimne? Why do you think Tomo Yaya Nimne is telling Joseph Baga to focus on the economy, about building schools and roads, and he should think about War Crown Code maybe at the end of his post, at the end of the tenure? Because I told you on the show, they think that if you kick down the, the cane down the road to the end of Baga presidency, they will be able to hold future presidential candidate again you know, holding, holding to the topic, like, I don't know how to say it, that they can use it. They always want to use their war ground coating as a political chip, as a political football, that they can hold people hostage to negotiate, to keep dragging it and keep dragging it. That is what I'm telling you. For the first time in history, Joseph Walker will have the opportunity to, to establish himself as one of the greatest figures in the history of Liberia with the war in economic crimes code. Because the people want it, unfortunately, the major players that have inflicted the biggest damage and the most grotesque form of human existence in Liberia, they are the one rejecting this thing. And it's up to the senior, according to the other statesmen, to really wear his big ball pens and pull a pen to the people on the whole issue of war crimes code. And yeah. they don't know anything more than this. There's the, there's the last chance. If Baka is going to let the Liberian people down on war and economic crime code, they will get kissed goodbye forever. Yes, I agree with you, Monk, that this is a perfect opportunity and the timing is right. And, you know, it, it, I don't know it, I don't know if it, this could have come any other time in our history. This is a walk in the park, golden opportunity, like Dr. White said here yesterday. The Liberian government don't have to do nothing. What are the expenditure, the security? Anything that has to do with war and economic crimes code, establishing of everything, they got it covered. Dr. White even went as far as saying, you know, he's lobbied, he's been to... Uh, Congress more than once, more than once, which is a huge plus. We've watched it over the news here and other places. And that's true. He's been there more than once. But there still is this delay and other things going on. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll give it maybe two or three more minutes because we've been here for two hours and 38 minutes to see if uh, we get a few calls for today. Well, folks, um, would encourage you, call your people back home. Um, call on your president to do what is right. As we speak now, Joseph Wakai has this uh, whole thing in his hand and on the table. Joseph Wakai has it. You know, tomorrow I will join the show Hmm. Uh, yeah, there is there is something that's that's happening that has been reported by a couple of librarians from the Senate. Tomorrow I will expand on it. I'll talk about it just a little bit. It's disgraceful what your lawmakers are doing in order to confront people. The allegations are very concerning. Even 
the allegations of the one economic crimes court, the push and the relationship of certain people. And I'm speaking about Senator Darius DeLong. These guys are doing a lot of things behind closed doors to kill this effort. They are. And we tell the Liberian people, we're getting to it tomorrow to expand on it. Monk, do you have a parting comment before we leave? Because I wanted to make sure we leave on time. Well, I think I'm okay for the day. I don't have that much to say. I think we reiterated the fact that it's up to President Joseph Yeman Buaka. I don't know how in the country that our entire generation of Liberian who have gotten scammed by war laws and the same people are the ones that are making laws on our behalf today. They are staying in government after selling the biggest myth to the Liberian public that they were giving amnesty, which never happened. So it's not only much to be said. I can only say that President Joseph Yuma Baga is the one the entire country is looking up to to do to do to do the needful in this case of a war economic crimes court. That's all I can say for now until tomorrow. Okay, Mo, thank you so much, folks. Thank you for always following SKTV. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your love. Thanks for every everything you do for SKTV. We appreciate you. We have to run for the rest of the day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. For those of you who could not call today, um, sorry that you didn't call in, but just so you know, highlight of today, there was no amnesty given to Prince Johnson or anybody. They might not lie to you. If any one of them say, say that lie, no amnesty. They need to be held accountable. Thank you. Let's have a good week. Happy new week. Um, we'll be back tomorrow and happy Ramadan to our Muslim brothers and sisters. We'll be back tomorrow by the grace of God. Ciao, ciao. Have a good afternoon, a good night, a good week. Stay blessed. See you tomorrow. Hasta la vista. Thank you. Let's get this rolling. They are things they can do. We bring it good news and we give it to you. We talk about what you have to do to people and culture from here and up out of the club. What is our people who wait in the cell? Blessing that some in the airport are red. The brothers are giving us yet. The parents are dead. The world from a lot of time again. Oh, I live with my LT. Master, master, master. Clear body is who I make on you. I can't ask you if you bring you. Say my journey, I don't get a say my young woman. And you say no money, and more I get you. And you love our boy, and more I get you. That's be the best in Liberia. That's thirteen, be the best in Africa. That's thirteen, be the best in my Liberia. Must so bad, I love our air grandfather. And I didn't know you're too many. And I said, yeah, you're too many.